All right. I think we are live on Twitch now. Uh, welcome to another Ain't Slayed Nobody live stream. Uh, this one's going to be a little more interesting than the last two. I'm not trying to offend you, Rena, because you were on both oh, of thanks. those. But I, I kept the last two, and now we have a real keeper. So, uh, oh, and Wes is here, of course. So, <laughs> so that's going to be another uh, uh, added element of flavor. Uh, but, but welcome. Thank you for tuning in live. I'm going to try to... Uh, uh, <laughs> to manage the chat while I die here. Uh, I'm Cuppy Cup, and I'm the keeper for Ain't Slayed Nobody. Today, we're playing Murder Shack, which was written by Scott Dorward, and he's our uh, generous keeper, I'm sure, today. Uh, Scott, you may know from the good friends of Jackson Elias, uh, an excellent podcast that he runs with Paul Fricker and Matt Sanderson, and also the website BlasphemousTomes.com, which uh, I believe if you sign up for the, uh, the good friends Patreon, Maybe there's a link on Blasphemous Tomes that you can get the scenario. Is. is that right, Scott? That's right. It is in issue 5.5 of the Blasphemous Tome, which is the zine that That's we cool. produce for our backers. Uh, the five, the point five editions are PDF digital downloads. And yes, if you uh, sign up for our Patreon, you can download this scenario as well as last year's one, uh, which was written by Paul Fricker. All right. Wonderful. Is there, um, and, and of course we're joined by, uh, Rena Henze today as one of my mm -hmm. fellow players and mm -hmm. Wes Davis, who, uh, is Jeremiah on Ain't Slayed Nobody. So glad to have y'all here Apologies. with us. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> A good Sorry group to die. Sorry anything I may have said or done. Yeah. <laughs> And anything you may say later in this in this stream, right? Too. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. Right, very good. So, uh, Scott, before we play a scenario called Murder Shack, are there any warnings that we should give our audience? Yes, I suppose so. Uh, the I, I guess one of the content warnings, the clue is probably in the name. This may get a little violent. It may get a bit murdery in places, uh, but there is also a content warning for suicide. So, you know, be warned. All right. Very good. Does does anyone else have anything to uh, to plug before we begin? Rena, you're working on all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I've got an arc on the D&D podcast First Watch coming up pretty soon. We'll be recording that in a couple weeks. So keep an eye out around November and on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at snarky underscore Romulan. It's where I keep everyone updated about all the various projects I'm doing. Um, you can also find me on the upcoming arc of Ain't Slayed Nobody, Mr. Corbett, uh, which is dropping fairly soon. I don't remember the exact date. Me either. Um, I'm sure Cup doesn't want to remember the exact date. <laughs> um, and you can find me on the Ain't Slayed Nobody Discord and the Good Friends of Jackson Elias Discord and the How We Roll Discord as Romulan Rena. Happy to chat, be on your podcast, whatever. Awesome. Wes, you can plug wow. Unland, which is coming out. That's what I was about Tuesday. to do, man. <laughs> oh, awesome. Cue me, it's September 23rd, is it not? 22nd, Tuesday. Yeah. 20 22nd, whatever. Get it a day late. <laughs> but Un Unland was Unland was hella fun to do. So uh, y'all go listen to that. And as always, I'm going to plug mental health. If you're feeling down, please go see and talk somebody. That's it. That's all Excellent. I got. And, and Unland, <laughs> uh, Scott, you ran that for us, too. That was another scenario that you wrote for, uh, what's it called? Fear's Sharp Little Needles from Stygian Yes, Stygian that's Fox. right. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes, we did that as a crossover with How We Roll, um, for whom also I'm, I'm currently running the Two-Headed Serpent, which is the pulp Cthulhu campaign that I uh, co-wrote with Paul Fricker and Matt Sanderson. So Perfect. And they've, they've started their own uh, Twitch channel, too, Does It Roll? So check that one out. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Um, I, I learned 3D dice from watching them and then trying to figure out how to steal that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hopefully those work. Um, but I think that uh, other than Unland coming out next week for us, I don't have anything else to plug. So I'm ready to I'm hesitantly turning it over to you, Scott. I'm worried about where, the, where this one's <laughs> going to head. What's that? Plug back episodes of the Bullcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go back five years ago into the archive of my other blog. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, again, I'll try to stay active in the chat. Uh, I'll do my best. If I'm dying, I'll be slow. Uh, but we do have a trailer for Unland uh, at our intermission. So we'll take a 10 minute break at some point. And uh, also telling the story of Ain't Slayed Nobody, our main podcast arc through public domain westerns. Uh, so that's kind of fun, too. <laughs> so that's a little 10 minute romp through our, our other podcast. Uh, content all right scott i've promised so many times to throw it to you and now i'm actually doing it marvelous 
So, this scenario takes place in the modern day. I say the modern day, we'll make it 2019 so we don't have to deal with, well, you know. And it kicks off at least in Asheville in North Carolina, a place about which I know almost nothing. So, apologies to our listeners if I screw up any local details. And the player characters are all members of a support group called Survivors, which meets every Wednesday evening at the New Life Church in Asheville. The support group is designed to help people who have lost loved ones to violent crime. Now, there are about eight people in the group. Not everyone turns up every week, but yeah, it's uh, fairly well attended. It's led by Pastor Waltz of uh, the New Life Church. And you three are sort of a group within the group. I will work out what kind of relationships you have as we go through the introductions. But what makes you stand out within this group is that, unlike everyone else, you three all lost someone to the same incident. Last year, about six months ago, it's now March. So about six months ago, there was an incident, a mass murder that took place in a cabin in the woods uh, to the northwest of Asheville, about an hour's drive outside town. And yeah, the, the murder or the mass murder was a bloody one. People were hacked up with what was described by the medical examiner as an old farm implement. There was one person, however, and we'll get to this in just a moment, who was not um, hacked up, but whose body was found hanging from a rafter, um, apparently having committed suicide. Now, this may lead to some suspicions that they were responsible for murdering everyone else. The police and the medical examiner, however, have not made any conclusive determinations about this. Um, you know, they, they, they haven't, as far as you're, you're concerned, adequately resolved the case and you know, because of lack of evidence, they may never actually do so. So I think with that established, let's go around and introduce your characters one by one, and then we'll launch into a meeting. Uh, do you want to start, Rena? Sure. Uh, so tonight I'm playing uh, Dr. Alex Sharp, psychiatrist. Their pronouns are they and them. Um, they're fairly tall, about six foot one, to use the American nomenclature. Um, and um, they have very short, sort of close cropped hair, dark gray eyes, um, very androgynous sort of features, uh, a nose ring, which they take out when they're at work. Um, and they tend to go for skinny jeans and flannels uh, and hiking boots. They like the outdoors quite a bit. So that's what you'll normally see them in when they're not at work. And who did Alex lose mm -hmm. in the murder? Alex lost their partner, uh, Patricia, who usually went by Pat. Partner of six years. Okay. I suppose, sorry, I should establish at this stage uh, what they were all doing there, or the people who died. So this was a weekend retreat for a local startup in Asheville called The Inmost Light, who were um, a small company uh, led by a woman called Natalie Fernan, who basically produced... <laughs> I mean, largely digital uh, products, but they were starting to move into physical products aimed at people who practice mindfulness meditation. Um, right, uh, Wes, do you want to tell us who you're playing? Playing a character named Paul Beavers. Um, he's a marketing analyst. Uh, he's, a, he's just kind of a average guy. You probably catch him wearing dockers and, um, to try to have a little cool streak. He's wearing, uh, wearing like skate shoes, um, with a tucked in t-shirt cause he can't be too, 
too out there. He's a little, little conservative for the marketing industry. And, um, in his, uh, in his life, he lost his brother, Jeremy in the incident. Um, and Jeremy was the product manager for the guided meditation product, uh, at Inmost Light. Excellent. And then you, Cuppy Cup, tell us who you're playing. God All help right. us. <laughs> I'm playing, uh, <laughs> my character's name is Bobby Double, and I am a gas station proprietor here in Asheville, North Carolina. I, uh, I'm a franchisee of the Sip and Zip, a popular gas station chain, and uh, I'm a pretty, pretty average guy, wears a, a work shirt around with navy trousers, uh, pretty pretty average build, uh, thinning hair. He's uh, he's pretty reserved. He he doesn't openly share information, uh, at least with within this support group, uh, because uh, one of the victims, his brother uh, Eric Double, was that man you mentioned earlier, Scott, who was hanged. Uh, so he he kind of feels this air of suspicion uh, around his brother uh, potentially being the murderer, even though he's he's his twin brother with the last name double. So, so he's, he's pretty sure that, uh, that his brother's not involved in, uh, in the actual murdering and, you know, but the support group is, you know, lets him air out his feelings every now and then when the moment's right. Okay. So like I said, it is Wednesday night. And so it's time for the regular weekly meeting of survivors. As you all arrive, I'm assuming you're not all turning up together, but as you arrive, mm -hmm. well, Pastor Bolts is there helping uh, to set up the tables and chairs. Um, there are a couple of people who are putting out the uh, the table for the coffee urn and the snacks. Uh, Tammy Jo, who works at a local donut place, has brought a, a box of day olds to share with everyone. But you know, last time she did that, you could have hammered in nails with them. Uh, you know, you can smell the coffee from the the urn that's brewing, and I mean, it's coffee. You can probably drink it, but yeah, it's it does have that slight aftertaste of battery acid. Um. But yeah, I mean, Pastor Paul, you know, greets each one of you as you come in. He's a a man in his late fifties, early sixties, with a shock of grey hair. Um, you know, he's he's one of these people who puts on a cheerful demeanour, but you've seen it crack too many times to know to believe that it's is genuine. He's um, you know, he's not just leading this group. Um, because it helps the community, but also because he lost his wife in a convenience store robbery many years ago. Was that a sip and zip? Going to ask. <laughs> Look, you, 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 you've got enough shit coming your way without the pastor hitting you as well. <laughs> Fair enough. Um. So yeah, as you turn up, you get roped into. You know, setting up the chairs and tables and so on. You see as well that there's, as well as the usual attendees, I mean, there's, it looks like, including the pastor, there's six of you this evening. Including the usual attendees, there's someone new this evening. You haven't seen a new person turn up to this since, well, you lot six months ago. Uh, there's a young woman who's come in who is standing by the doorway very hesitantly looking in. She looks like she's in her late teens, early 20s. She's got frizzy blonde hair, fairly long, and tied back with a red bandana. Uh, she's wearing a fairly colourful blouse tied across her midriff in a knot and faded, fairly ratty-looking jeans and sandals. And... You know, Pastor Walsh, you know, as soon as he notices her, goes over, and you can see that they're having a quiet conversation. Well, Alex is going to walk in and take a cup of coffee and go sit in a corner seat where they can watch the conversation without appearing to watch the conversation, just taking in all the details in case they need them later and not speaking to anyone else. 
Well, I'll tell you what, then let's go straight into the dice. If you want to eavesdrop on this without making it look like you're eavesdropping, you can give me a listen roll. Okay. Let's see. I listen. Crit, fail, Ain't crit, shady. fail, crit, fail. <laughs> I already did a crit fail when I'm on my test dice. Hopefully not again. <laughs> Nope, that is not a success. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, there are people still dragging chairs around, and um, there's the conversations of lots of people. You know, as the, well, lots of people, the eight or so people mm-hmm. who are there as as people are drifting in. So yeah, you can't really make out any of it. And Bobby's just uh, going over to the table of refreshments and scoffing at the stale donuts. Hell, mm-hmm. the fresher at the sip and zip. Just kind of muttering under his breath, but not not taking a keen interest in the the new woman. He he just wants to. I guess Reno already took the corner <laughs> with mm-hmm. Alex, but uh, um, when he sees they took that seat, uh, uh, Bobby's going to take uh, uh, the other, the next farthest seat away from everybody he can. Well, as you're walking over towards it, I mean, Tammy Joe shoots you a look and says. Well, you keep talking about how good your donuts are at the Sip and Zip, but you never see you bring any over here. Yeah, you know, well, uh, I'm not, I'm not running a charity. I'm just, uh, just, just trying to make a little comment here. Even our day olds are better than these, though. Hell. Now she harumphs and sits down heavily in her seat. Good. I want all of these people to hate murderer. Bobby. <laughs> All right, Paul sees that, and he's going to go walk over and sit next to Tammy Joe and uh, let her know that it's uh, it's okay. And uh, her her donuts are very good, and uh, he values her as a client. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're dying first. Um. Fuck you! Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm just so excited. <laughs> um, then, I mean, the last couple of people drift in. There's there's Eugene who lost his uh, his son a while back. Um, he doesn't. I mean, he's he's changed the details of the story a few times, but reading between the lines, it sounds like it was a drug deal that went wrong. And then there's uh, Christine, um, who uh, tends to be fairly quiet through the meetings. Um, but yeah, but the Pastor Waltz leads this young woman over and she sits down. She manages to find, I mean, even though the seats are all in a circle, she seems to find the one that is pushed the furthest back and sits in that and, and actually pushes it just that bit further back and sits there with her arms crossed, just staring down at the ground. Can I try to push my chair further back than hers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Is, is the entire meeting just going to be the slow? <laughs> so we're at the back wall? The chair's being pushed back. <laughs> I think so. Uh-huh. Rena, uh, Alex might want to join in this contest. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, a- Alex doesn't go in for that sort of thing. They don't have anything to prove to anyone. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, but Pastor Ball starts off the meeting with the usual, thanking everyone for coming and um, just without you know, too much ado, launches into you know, asking how everyone is doing. And I mean, almost immediately, Tammy Joe jumps in there. And she's, I, it would have been uh, her daughter's um, 22nd birthday next week. So she's got quite a lot to process and, um, you know, she's, she's getting, I mean, she always gets very emotional whenever she talks to these things, but she's getting even more emotional than usual. You know, this is going to be a, a big thing for her. And she talks about how, you know, she thought she had it all together at long last, but, you know, whenever you know, holidays and birthdays and so on comes up, it just sort of brings everything home again. And you know, by the time she gets through you know, a few minutes of this, she, she just has to stop because she's been floods of tears. Mm-hmm. Um, while, while this is happening, I mean, you notice the new woman who's come in 
she doesn't seem to be paying any attention to, you know, she didn't really look over at Pastor Balls when he started things off. She's paid no attention to um, to Tammy Jo when she's been speaking. But she does seem to be casting surreptitious glances at each of the three of you. Can Bobby uh, stare back at her? I think I think Bobby uh, is particularly wary of people at this meeting because he does feel that uh, suspicion around mm. Eric, his brother. Uh, so do I recognize mm. her from anywhere or see anything no. else unusual? Mm. No. I'm fairly sure you've not seen her before. Okay. I you could give me a yeah, give me a spot hidden role because I the lighting of this room isn't fantastic, but just see whether you can pick up on a few details about her. Okay. As long as I'm glaring at her while I do this spot hidden. <laughs> uh so that's a fail. Uh my spot hidden's not very good. I'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna okay. push this one. Oh, <laughs> Push the roll. I'm worried when it's push called Murder Shack that even pushing a spot push hidden will get me killed. <laughs> That's half the fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you know, she just carries on looking at the floor, and then just every now and then, her eyes are flicking over towards you. Okay. Um, so, uh, are any of you speaking during the, the meeting this evening? Are you sharing anything about what's going on? Oh, of Alex course. definitely will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to go yeah, ahead, so Alex? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Alex just sort of leans forward, like resting their elbows close to their knees and looking down at the floor, not looking at anyone. Um, they're, they're trying very hard to, to take their own advice. You know, psychiatrist, heal thyself by going to these meetings and actually making themselves talk, but it's hard. Um, and they just sort of look at the floor and they say, I had to go back to work yesterday for the first time. I couldn't take more than six months. And I saw one of my regulars and, oh, I just I wanted to get out of there. Just, she wouldn't stop talking. And there was been coming to me for months and talking about this stupid boyfriend who's no good for her. And she knows he's no good for her. And she, and he, he he's abusive to her. And, and he, the, she won't leave him, but she keeps coming to my office and she won't shut up about how much she loves this stupid man and how she wishes she could leave him. And I have to sit there and I have to tell her I have to be nice to her. And I just wanted to get up and slap her in the face and tell her to get out and grow up. And I can't do that, obviously. And I just felt so angry. And is it always going to be like this? I don't know if I can... can't listen to their stupid little problems anymore and I don't want to think they're stupid but they are just so fucking stupid and they just rub their temples and just, just keep staring at the floor uh, Bobby looks up just long enough to, to shoot uh, Paul one of these like give him, a, give him a little look like it was a little more intense than usual from Alex. Paul kind of nods. He understands the anger, though. Well, Alex, I understand what you're going through. I get mad all the time. Every day I think about my brother. I miss him so much. But I just kind of try to find strength in the little things, you know, like the little joys of life. You know, wake up in the morning, see the sun come up, but it gets difficult to find that joy every day. Paul, do you ever just want to? Do you ever just want to punch someone in the face because they look too happy when they said hello? Oh my God, yes! Oh my okay. God, yes! Every day, I just want to. I like you know. Sometimes in a client meeting, 
they'll be talking about how our marketing's not doing enough for their product. And I just want to, you know, just reach across and grab them by the shirt and say, you listen here, you put more money into it. And I just, mm, I'm sorry, y'all. I got to get a little emotional. Bobby's scooting his chair further back as they're talking about punching somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I ain't got a whole lot to say. I, uh, I know where y'all y'all coming from, but I, I seen the way you look at me, the way you see my brother, and think he did those terrible things, but it ain't true. And uh, I just, I guess I just want people to know that I feel the same hurt that that you do. And I, hell, I I look like him, but I I don't know these people. I didn't know your kin. I, I'm just trying to pick up the pieces of my own life, damn it. And, uh, it ain't fair. It ain't fair. I hear you talking during our little breakouts. and I'm just tired is all. I'm just tired. The young woman who's been sitting there silently just staring at the ground until now looks up and says, almost too quietly for anyone to hear, I don't think he did it. Oh. I'll s- look up at her. Sorry, ma'am. What did what did you just say? Nothing, she says, and then goes back to looking at the ground. And Pastor Pulse looks around and says, uh, "Annie, do you have anything you'd like to share with us tonight?" And she just shakes her head and carries on looking at the ground. Well, wait. You said. You said you don't think he did it. Why don't you think he did it? Because he didn't. Well, how would you know? She just looks really confused for a moment and then just shakes her head and, um, you know, her whole face purses and she just looks at the ground even more intently. Uh, Bobby's actually going to get up and walk over to her uh, and you know, stand maybe three feet away and just say, you're for sure dead. Who? <laughs> <laughs> no, cause Roll he's dexterity. He's his, his whole life at this point is basically dedicated to trying to yeah. clear his brother's name. So when she says that for it's sure. very intriguing uh, to him. So he's going to walk over and say, who, who are you? What, what do you know about these murders? What, why did you say that? Uh, Pastor Balls at this, say, this stage stands up and he puts a gentle hand on, on Bobby's shoulder and just says fairly quietly into your ear, maybe we can talk about this afterwards. This is meant to be a safe space. I think you might be a bit threatening at the moment. Sit sit down and if you need, if you need to speak later, please, you know, my door is always open. Yeah, I can I, I can catch up with her later. That's, okay, yeah, yeah. Just uh, and then just kind of stare at her as I go back to my seat. I, and yeah, she's looking back up at you, and you can see, yeah, her her eyes. Then, I mean, there's, yeah, you're not quite sure what the emotion in there is. I, mean, she's, she looks confused more than anything else. Hmm. I could roll for accounting if she is. <laughs> it's an accounting look. <laughs> no, I'll just I'll sit down. Um, I'm 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 okay. I'm okay. Alex is just sort of watching this. Like they, they have very still body language. As a psychiatrist, they're very adept at keeping their body language neutral when they want to. Um, but they're watching this whole interaction. Um, can I do a psychology roll to see if I'm picking up on what she's emoting? If anything. Yeah, by all means. This is where I'm going to get the that 100, right? (laughs) Is there psychology 99? (laughs) Not not quite, but close. Well. Oh. (laughs) Still missed. God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) Go have a donut. uh, Alex Alex is just too overcome. They're, they're still feeling, obviously, all of this rage and this mm-hmm. this 
emotion that they'd been keeping up until they could speak at this meeting and they can't quite separate other people's emotions from what they're feeling right now to be able to tell what she's actually giving off. And also, in Alex's defense, this young woman, Annie, does seem to be fairly inscrutable. Mm. Pa- pa- Pastor, Pastor, uh, I'm sorry, yes, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to run your meeting for you or nothing, but isn't it, isn't it, isn't it customary, at least for pe- folks to introduce themselves when they come into this meeting? The types of things we talk about here, I just... I don't feel comfortable in front of a total stranger. Well, we were all strangers once, weren't we, Bobby? Yeah, you just, you got a way of saying things, I suppose. All right, all right. I just won't talk none then. That's different from normal how? Alex. Please, Alex, please. I have the I have a stale this donut. Is, <laughs> ready to throw it. <laughs> this 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 is a safe space. Please treat the other attendees with respect. That's all right. I'm okay. I'm trying to, Pastor. I'm trying. He's been coming to these meetings all six fucking months, and he's spoken maybe twice. Listening Look, to all everybody's of us got their place. Pain. <clears throat> Everybody takes their own time, Alex. Find it peculiar the night I do speak that you lash out at me. I'm, I'm trying here. I got, I got more on my plate than y'all do. That's all. Oh, fucking really? You don't know what it's like dealing with the press, dealing with y'all. As People if we come don't have to, to deal with zip. you. I hope we don't kill each other before we <laughs> finish the meeting. Um, Paul just hangs his head, and puts Bobby, his head in his hands and sighs. Bobby turns his chair toward Paul, away from Alex. He's Alex very, knows they're not being just, super professional, but they're just they're they're angry, and they're, as a as a professional, they can't vent their anger anywhere else. Because they don't have anyone to vent it to. And this feels like the only place they can. Especially when the target of their anger is right in the room. <laughs> Annie is watching all of this quietly. Again, with that same unreadable expression. Uh, your character sharing anything else that meeting? Or shall we skip to the end of the meeting? I think Bobby's pretty going to be pretty quiet from here on out unless he's prodded for for information. Yep, Paul's probably shutting down. Mm. The conflict will will shut him down. And Alex doesn't trust himself to say anything else right now. Out of respect to the pastor. Okay, well, I mean, with you three finished, uh, Eugene starts up, and uh, he perhaps, you know, with some poor judgment, tries to lighten the situation, makes a, a, a few sort of dad jokes, and um, just uh, sort of stumbles around a bit conversationally, loses his thread, tries to then steer it back into actually talking about genuine emotions. And by the time everyone's done, the emo- the total whiplash from the whole thing seems to have uh, yeah, bemused him as much as everyone else. And the meeting just sort of putters out at the end of that. Uh, Pastor Waltz asks, thanks everyone else for, you know, for, for coming this evening, or thanks you all for coming this evening. And, you know, makes his usual plea to everyone to help put everything away afterwards. Stack the chairs and the tables and so on. Yeah, Bobby's going to help out. Sounds like Eugene could be on our podcast. I stack all the chairs by myself. (laughs) (laughs) Very angrily stacking chairs. I'm throwing the rest of the donuts away, the leftovers. (laughs) (laughs) Paul's, Paul's grabbing a broom and is going to sweep up under the snack table. And Annie is standing over by the doorway. She's got a mobile phone out now. 
And uh, she she's looking at it every now and then, just giving it a, you know, a little prod or a flick. Can Bobby uh, uh, take the, the trash bag outside? Like he's going to take it to the dumpster and kind of try to pry, see what she's up to as he walks through the doorway? Yeah. I, she, as, as he walked towards her with the bag, she said... I've got something to show you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just get that door right quick and we can talk in the hallway. You can walk out to the dumpster with me. Um, she, she says, but I need to talk to them and them as well. And she points at uh, Alex and, uh, and Paul. Okay. Well, and he's so curious that he's just going to put the bag down next to the door. All right, then let's let's talk. Let's talk. Paul. Paul, get over here just for yeah. What for a minute here? What, what do you want? You want to talk now? Well, not me. Not me. She wants to talk. She wants to talk. Alex. Oh. Alex, put them chairs down. Get over here, please. Clatter. <laughs> 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 Um, Become striding over. Yeah, or perhaps because you, you know, you're in a bit of a temper, it takes you a moment to realize. I mean, you're know, looking at Annie who's standing there holding this phone, and then I guess, you know, after a moment, your attention goes to the phone, and what Alex notices, I mean, it's probably a coincidence, but the plastic case on the phone is exactly the same as the one that Pat had. <sighs> yes. You wanted to show us something? Uh, yes. Uh, do you know how to get the photographs on this? What, on like a mobile phone? Yeah. Is it not your phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, it is. I, I, I'm just not very good with it. Like, you look like square in the demographic of somebody that would know how to use a mobile phone, like, real well. She shrugs. Alex just holds out their hand, like, expectantly. Well, she, okay, she passes it over to you, and... Okay. Yeah, you look at it, and the screen has got a crack on it in exactly the same place as Pat's phone had. This is your phone? Yeah. Right. Is it password protected or fingerprint protected protected or anything? No. Okay. So... Keeping one eye on her and one eye on the phone, I'm going to pull up the photo app. Okay, yep. You go to the photo app and the first picture in the gallery is a picture of Pat standing. It looks, from the lighting, it looks like it was taken with a flash photograph. And Pat is standing against a, a wooden wall, a fairly rough looking wooden wall. Um, sorry, uh, Pat's pronouns. Are they uh, she, she or she, her. Uh, they she. she, her. Okay. Um, so yeah, Pat, uh, she's looking blankly at the um, at the photographer, um, as obviously was when the photograph was taken. Uh, just no expression at all on her face. She asked me to come and find you. Where did you get this? Where did you there, get there, this? There, there, there are more. Start rapidly scrolling, like swiping through the photos. The next picture on there is a, a picture of uh, Jeremy Beavers. Again, standing uh, against this uh, wooden wall, the same kind of blank expression on his face. Paul, 
Look at this. What? Look at this. Where did where did you get this photo? Did somebody send this to you, or did you take this picture? She says, keep going. Okay. And the next picture on there is one... I, it, if you hadn't seen the other two pictures, first of all, you probably would have assumed that it was Bobby, but maybe it's Eric. Bobby? What's going Who is on? this? Is this you or him? What the hell? You certainly don't remember a picture like that being taken. Well, no. This ain't... And the, the shirt that, that Eric's wearing, in fact, the clothes that all of them are wearing, you're fairly certain are the photographs that they were wearing at the, you know, before they died last year. What is this? Where'd you get this? Where'd you get these pictures? They, they, they asked me to take them. Who? Who? Who's they? So, them, she says, just pointing at the phone. They asked me to come and find you, and they, they need your help. Who the hell are you talking about? You're talking about the people in the photos asked you? Yes. You mean they need, the, need our help? They're fucking dead. I fuck you! Last night. Fuck you! Do you fucking get off on coming to people in their grief and just fucking playing mind games with them? Fuck you! <sighs> Ma'am, I'm gonna ask you one time: Where the fuck did you get this phone and these pictures from? I took the pictures last night. They they asked me you, to do so. What? You took these pictures last night? Yes. <gasps> These people. Of my brother. I've seen other pictures. These these people ain't alive. You're lying. Where? If that's my brother, you take me to him right now. Yes, that's what he wanted me to do. I, I just, I went into this, I went into this shack in the woods, this cabin, I, I just needed somewhere to crash overnight, and they were there. They they asked me to. They said that they needed help. They asked me to come and find you. They told me about each of you and said said where I could find you. I've spent all day looking for you. Where where are you She's where do you dead. come from? You live here. You live in Asheville. No. No. This still don't make any sense. She's dead. Don't you understand? I had to identify her. She's fucking dead. Yeah, this ain't funny. We buried my brother. What was left of him? What was left of Pat? Eric's neck's broken. Uh, this ain't Eric. This. When did you take these? No, not last night. How many years ago you take these? You're playing a trick on us, or? took them last night they well, I, I was sleeping in the shack and they, they woke me up can I go into the details on the photo because it can tell me when it was taken yep it was taken a little after 3 a.m. today oh god can Bobby grab the phone and like start scrolling through every photo that's in the album once you get past those three you're starting to go back to ones that were taken, yeah, from the date stamps, if you check them on the weekend of the murder, and they're showing the various people from the inmost light there at uh, the the retreat. Um, there are a few of them sitting around outside you know, having beers. Um, there's, you know, them sharing a meal inside. Uh, there's photographs of you know them gathered around a whiteboard brainstorming ideas and stuff like that wait is this your phone yes but you didn't know how to get to pictures but this is your phone yes how did you work at did you work it in most lot i i don't know what that is But you have all these pictures of, of our kin. Uh, 
Uh, they asked me to take them. From the day of the murder? What, what, what murder? What do you mean, what murder? You just walked into a grief group. We all talked about it. So, so yes, I, I, I was told I could find you here. So, the people you were talking about in the meeting, is that them? Yes. Who of course. That's why we're reacting like this. They told you to come here? Who told you to come here? And she just points at the phone again. You're going to need to get more verbal. Ma'am, I'm about to call the police if you don't start being straight with us. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you everything I know. How far is this place? This place you've seen them? I, I can take you there. It's maybe an hour's drive. I, I hitched here. Paul, what do you want to do? I want to get in my car right now and go. Y'all want to go? It's not possible. It's not possible. It's it's not fucking. And there's. I'll, I'll go up there with you, but. If this is some hideous prank, I'm calling the cops on you. She just nods quietly. And I, Bobby whispers to Paul, if this is a prank, I'm going to kill this woman. I'm going to help you. I'll hide the body. So maybe she By heard it too. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, seeing as the, the three of you have been now fairly close up with Annie, Without now having to make a spot hidden roll, there are a few things that you've picked up as you've been talking to her. Uh, that she, I mean, while she is obviously quite young, she's got quite a weathered look to her as well. Um, her skin looks quite rough as if she spent quite a lot of time outdoors. And um, there's a fine network of, of broken blood vessels of gym blossoms on her cheeks that... Um, indicate, I guess, either a lot of time spent outdoors or heavy drinking. Um, she also, I mean, she doesn't smell bad, but I mean, she's definitely unwashed and uh, she's clearly tried to cover up the lack of bathing with a lot of patchouli oil. If this is some kind of trick to get money out of us, it's not going to end the way you think it's going to end, ma'am. I, I don't want your money. I'm just trying to help them. Why couldn't you bring them to us then? Why they didn't they follow to, you? They, they, they just said that they needed help and asked me to... I, I, I don't know. You, 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 look, you, you keep asking me lots of questions I don't have the answers to. I'm sorry. Were they in cages? Why? I'm, just, I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help. Why couldn't they leave? They're locked in there? What, what are you telling us? Look, they... they just said for me to get you. Paul, are you driving? Oh, hell yeah. Shotgun. <laughs> Damn it. Deep glare at Bobby. I don't want to take my Mustang out there anyway. I ride in the back. I don't I don't give a damn. <laughs> hmm. And Terrible Alex boat. has already marched out of the church because if they don't start moving, they might actually start breaking something with Paul all the pent-up rage. <laughs> Alex is ahead, so Paul clicks the unlock so <laughs> Alex can get in the car. And not rip the handle <laughs> off the door. <laughs> right, and trots off behind her to get in the driver's seat. Mm. And Bobby's going to whisper to Paul, can she ride in the trunk about the new, the new woman? <laughs> now be nice and let her ride in the back, but if she messes up, we can do what we need to. <laughs> All right, I got. I have like a a can of mints on me. <laughs> we can use that as a weaponize that. <laughs> so Annie's sitting in the back uh, with Bobby. Are you just driving straight off at the stage? Are you picking up anything first, or are you heading straight out of town? Do we want to stop at the sip and zip? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I no, I got my don't. gun there, uh, <laughs> ma'am. Wh- who else was here? Is this is this dangerous? What what are we what are we driving into here exactly? How how did this place look? What did you see? You slept there. It's just a, a wooden cabin in the woods. Right. Paul, you got a axe or a baseball bat or something in the trunk in case there's trouble? Yeah, um, I, I keep a small, like, child-sized baseball bat in the trunk for protection. <laughs> um, I, I'm not that violent of a person, but, you know, I'll get there. <laughs> I will. You cross me. I will use that little bat and I will go fucking ninja on your ass. I don't like to use inappropriate words, but I will fuck you up. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> Which way are we going anyway? You know the way, miss? Well, she nods. I mean, you know where the cabin where all of this took place last year was, obviously. Um, it's, it's, up, uh, it's up Highway 63 up to the northwest. And have we, so, have we all obviously you know, been out there before? It's up to you. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Who, who who has actually been to the murder site before? Alex definitely yeah. has. Bobby's driven there, Closure. but he couldn't get out of the car. I don't think Paul. Paul has not. He didn't want to see it. But you probably still would have seen photographs in the news. Right. Mm-hmm. Because it was a fairly big local news story. Okay, so when you get into the car, are you, are you, were, were you, sorry, did one of you ask Danny where to go? Was that, yeah, I was asking right? if she knew yeah. the way. Yeah. The person in the back said, seat's the best person to do that. <laughs> uh, she, she's fucking GPS. She says, she says I, yeah, I, I, I hitched a ride from Lower Fork. And, I mean, you obviously know the geography of the area fairly mm-hmm. well, but Lower Fork is off to the east in almost completely the opposite direction from the shack. And I think it took a while for you Bobby to, to realize from- it was the same place that the the murders took place that this lady was talking about. Um, All right. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he's kind of getting it now. What was your, why were you driving through there? What was your business out there? Well, no, I mean, the point is that the place she's talking about isn't where the Oh, it isn't? Place. Okay, I thought how, you were just saying... How did you okay. get... Okay. How did you get all the way over there from the shack and then hit your ride? Well, no. now it just all seems like night. we have two murder shacks going on here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot for one town. <laughs> it's a chain operation. <laughs> it's a lot for one session. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she says, no, no I, I walked through the woods and I, I found Lower Fork and, yeah, I, I hitched a ride and you know, there was a trucker who brought me into town. Bobby's just sitting there trying to piece together, like, how could Eric be alive? Is this even possible? Uh, it, maybe the whole murder scene was some kind of fraud and they're alive somewhere. He's just trying to think, is that even possible? Um, but he can't, he can't make it work in his head. Not yet. And so what's your plan? Are you following Annie's directions? Are you going somewhere else? What, what, well, what are you doing? Paul's got the, uh, the address in the GPS because he's gotten to the car and queued it up several times, but couldn't get himself to go out there. So he's just hit the directions and we're heading towards, you know, ye old murder shack. Well, if you're heading off to the, you know, to, to that direction, I mean, like I say, the, you know, the murder site is in completely the opposite direction from where Annie is telling you to go. Yeah, this is so, the, the second murder shack. That we need to head to. Oh, 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 I thought she went from that shack to a different location and then hitchhiked. No, no, no. I was no, slow on that too. 
Yeah. Okay. No, I'm no, slower. No. That, that, that's 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 the thing that yeah. I mean, it's is perhaps not making any sense to you because if you'd associated this with where the murders had taken place, yeah, she's telling you to go somewhere completely different, somewhere completely different. I think uh, Bobby's encouraged by that because th- it does give him that kind of glimmer of hope that that they're alive if if it's a different place. If she was just taking us to the murder shack, I would think this was some kind of scam for sure. I'll go out there. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Nothing in my life can be worse than my life right now. So I just get the hell out here. Paul, go wherever, go wherever the hell she's telling you. She's got these pictures. It's, this ain't real. All right. All right, we'll go. Okay. So how are we how are we getting the directions if she doesn't really know? Well, she's told you to go to Lower Fork, and you know you that's, you take the highway out of town east uh, and drive for about an hour, okay. and she says she'll direct you from there. Alex so does not we'll say a one. thing the entire drive. Paul's nervously fiddling with the radio the whole way. <laughs> Ma'am, is there anything else you need to tell us before we get out to wherever the hell you're dragging us? She just shakes her head and then looks out the window. And what is it we're going to see there? We're going to see... We're going to see Eric alive? Is that what you're telling me? He told me to come and find you. I still have her phone mm. um, and I'm just obsessively just flicking back and forth through the pictures of, of Pat, just looking at them over and over and over again and then getting to the end and going back. Well, it's not just that. I mean, as you're going through the gallery, yeah, once you get past those, you start finding all sorts of personal photographs that Pat took a while back, including photographs of you. Ma'am, where'd you get this phone? And she just carries on looking out the window. Are you going to answer her or what? I told you. Alex just keeps staring straight ahead, uh, but says, Paul, it's Pat's phone. Are you sure it's Pat's phone? It's got the same case. Got the crack right here. She she dropped it in the kitchen when she was making curry one one evening because I snuck up behind her and and I and I just sort of put my arms around her, wanted to to you know just say hi. And she got surprised and she was checking her phone for the recipe and she she jumped and she dropped the phone and the screen cracked and that's it. I know that. I know that screen, Paul. And there's pictures on here that can't be on here unless it's her phone. Like what? Um, there, there's a picture of, of us and, and our dog from when we first moved down here. We moved okay. down here four years ago. How could how could she have have this picture, Paul? We never even put this on Facebook. It was just Young lady, phone. you're going to have to tell us where you got that phone. I told you it's my phone. It's not your phone. Can Bobby not like kind of lightly shake her as he, at, where did you get this phone? This ain't your phone. I keep telling you, I keep telling you, man, you, you can shout at me all you want, but I don't know what else to say. You, you, you can see you you can see just in the dim light that's inside the car the reflection of her face as she's looking out the window into the night I mean it's pitch dark outside now it's about ten o'clock at night and yeah you, you can see that her eyes are, are wide as she's looking out and she looks like a frightened child miss you said you said you said you knew Eric you said you knew Eric ain't done this you you know more than these three pictures. You know that you know these people. You heard me talking. Uh, tell us what you know. It's, it's not fair. It's not right. 
Yeah, he, he, he didn't do it, did he? I, I don't think he did it. He didn't, but how do you even right, know what Paul, it is? Yeah, hearing that, Paul pulls the car over and slams on the brakes angrily and throws the e-brake on and turns around and says, how do you know what you know? It's time to talk. Because I, I spoke to them last night. I, it, it's it's all it's all messed up in my head, man. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm I trying to get that. my head straight. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand this, but I, oh. so are we. It doesn't I don't understand? I, look, I'm just trying to help. They they asked me to come and find you. I came and found you. They they wanted me to take you back to them. I'm I'm taking you back to them. I I don't know what else I can do, man. I don't Did know they what say else anything else? Anything else? Yeah, they they said lots of stuff. I I don't know. It's, what do you mean lots of stuff? Just go ahead they, and spit it out. They t- they they talked about about you and and their lives and and how much they missed you and. How much they wanted to go home again, and I, I don't know. It's it, it's all jumbled up in my head, man. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dig deep in your head and find one thing that proves that you talked to these people last night. What did they tell you? Anything personal? Anything? Anything that will help us understand that the, that they're alive? Yeah, she. Eric. Eric said that if if you need a proof. I, I should tell you that, yeah, that you used to you used to hide your weed in the crawl space under the house, and that yeah, yeah, you, you, you always you always thought you were so clever doing that until a raccoon ate it. Paul, start driving. <laughs> Paul puts the car in gear and keep heading down the road. And Bobby's just going to stare through her the rest of the way. Sorry, I've got an excitable cat. Excuse me. For <laughs> that, that's, that's my favorite part of playing with you. Murder <laughs> chaos. <laughs> <laughs> this is anarchy. <laughs> okay. And the anarchy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I think, I think she's going to stay over there. Good. Good cat. So Bobby right. has, has so, hope now. Bobby's hopeful that this is just, some elaborate thing that's played out and that there's a chance that, that Eric's alive. So who would know that? Just Eric. That's it. Alex is just flipping through the photos obsessively, like over and over, get to the end and go back to the beginning and flip all the way back through them. But there's something that's perhaps nagging away at your mind, which is... Pat's phone was recovered from the crime scene. It, 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 you know, the police took all that stuff in as evidence. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't her phone. It's someone else's phone. Maybe the murderer left left the phone and took her phone. And this whoever she is picked it up last night. Maybe. Maybe that's it. Can can I go in and look at the the GPS, like the the record on the mm-hmm. GPS, and see if it's been anywhere? Like if, if this phone has been anywhere in the last six months? Yeah. Okay. Looking at the GPS records, there is a trail of movement today that started off in some woodland in the uh, South Mountains game uh, lands. Uh, near Lower Fork, and then, you know, it's it's gone through the woods up to Lower Fork and then you know, along the highway into Asheville. Then it seems to have travelled all through Asheville, through, you know, um, a few of your homes and places of business, and then onto the church. Until that, there hasn't been any activity on the phone for the past six months. Not since that weekend. So maybe whoever took the phone turned off the GPS, right? If if they thought we were looking for her phone, they would have. They wouldn't want the GPS running, okay? 
Okay, we can make sense of this. We can make sense of this. This is all their inner inner monologue <laughs> as as they're just obsessively going through everything. Yes, it, it wasn't Pat's phone. It wasn't, this is Pat's phone. So that cannot have been Pat's phone. <sighs> okay. Resume scrolling. Okay, and then once you reach Lower Fork, Annie directs you down, um, down a trail into the woods or down a road into the woods and then down another smaller road and then down another smaller road and you're, you're weaving all over the place through the woodlands following these, these dirt tracks, basically. And you know, finally you turn onto you know, one trail that you know, really is little more than a footpath. And after about you know, 20 minutes, half an hour of driving through the woods like this, you find yourself in a clearing of the woods. It's now 10.30, 11 at night. The moon is high overhead. There's thin clouds over the sky. And there in this clearing, in this fairly thin woodland, is a cabin that's standing there. And the cabin, despite the fact that it's a different place, looks exactly the same as the cabin in which those you love died. Are you seeing this, Alex? You've been out yep. there. Mm-hmm. Sure looks like it, but we're in the wrong place for it. It looks like the pictures. I think actually, based on your actions, let's have a sanity roll. Yeah, here. Oh, you right. I, probably, yeah. I, I probably should have done one earlier for using the phone as well, or the pictures on the phone. <laughs> so let's do that retroactively as well. So two sanity rolls? Yes. Two sanity rolls. Okay. Yes. Pass my first one. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not great. Um, okay, so that's one Ooh, fail. I passed. And and now you, do you want the second one? Or was that just uh, Alex? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's... Uh, I got a uh, hard success on my second sanity. Are you fucking kidding me? I missed by one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you rolled 46. So... So who failed the first one for seeing this stuff on the phone? Uh, yeah, Paul did. So, so just Paul. So Paul loses one point of sand for that. Excellent. I, I passed great. both for Bobby. So now you failed the second one by two. By two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and uh, so for the second one, seeing the you know this uh, this shack in the woods. Um, you only lose two points. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's sort of involuntarily you, know, you, you do gasp and... Um, well, actually, you're driving, aren't you? Oh, boy. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, you, you don't crash or anything <laughs> like that, but it's as you see it, I mean, you, you stall the car and it just comes to a sudden halt, jerking everyone inside as the headlights pick out the edifice of this. And it's a fairly simple wooden shack. It's a fairly old-fashioned design. It's a single-story cabin. Uh, there are shuttered windows. There's a little porch outside with a small set of stairs going up to it. And that's pretty much it. Does the woodland around the shack look the same as well, or just the shack itself? No. No, the woodland looks completely different. It's much sparser down here. I see. Okay. So it's just like somebody picked the shack up and dropped it in a different spot. Mm. Aliens. Nope, that's it. We solved it. End of game. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex is going to take a minute to do... Like they're, they're going to turn off Pat's phone, and they're going to tuck it in the pocket of their shirt. 
Uh, and they're going to do a quick grounding exercise to try to calm themselves down and just regain sort of their composure because this is a lot. Uh, and they don't want to go into into this place potentially freaking out on everybody. Um, so they're just going to do a quick countdown backwards visualization exercise before they are ready to get out of the car. Okay. Bobby's going to text his wife to not fully explain what's happening, but uh, to basically give the general area that, that he's in and to say there's there's okay. something something I have to take care of tonight. Um, like, like a little more sentimental than usual to talk, you know, just how much he loves her. And, um, you know, it's, you know, it's just wants her to be strong. Oh, OK, um, I don't know what what uh, Bobby's relationship with his wife is like, whether you're going to get a heartfelt text back or whether it's just going to be no. K. It, it's going to be anger that I didn't come, <laughs> that I didn't get home right after the meeting. Then, then Are you at the sip K. and zip again late? <laughs> <laughs> God and, uh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also going to test the flashlight on his phone to make sure that, you know, the battery looks mm-hmm. good and everything. Yeah. yeah, Paul. Yeah, Paul pulls his phone off the plug-in charger in the in the car, <laughs> puts it in his pocket, gets out of the car, goes around to the back of the trunk, and gets that small baseball bat, <laughs> <laughs> Paul, and kind of mm-hmm. sticks it in the back of his jeans. Paul, you got anything else useful in this car? Tire iron. I told you, I'm not flashlight. I, I mean, I think there's a there's a tire change kit over there. There might be a, you know, like a like a crowbar or something in there. You want to go, go check it out. Pops the trunk for everybody else to go scavenge through. Can I, can I, mean, I look if to got see a break if down anything? kit there? If you've got a breakdown kit there, there might be a flashlight as well. Mm-hmm. And I do. It was a boy scout. Damn. <laughs> of course you were. I was. So yeah. <laughs> All might have been. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah. The, <laughs> at the very least, then you can get a flashlight and a tire iron out of from there. So okay, yay. Al- Alex gets out of the car. They've got their jacket on because it's March, so it's still a bit chilly, and they've got it oh, yeah. uh, over the shoulder. It's like under the under the arm holster for their forty four. Um, <laughs> co- it's covered up by the jacket because they are concealed carrying. This is North Carolina, y'all. That's what we do. Yep. Um, but they do have their gun. <laughs> nice. Good, good point from the chat. Can we get specifics on just how small this bat is? Is it like a like a novelty bat you get at the minor league baseball game? I have one. Hold on. I, let me go. Let me go get it. Only if you I'm swing picturing it. it I'm, I'm picturing it as kind of a rounders bat. Okay, we, we've Let's got see. props, y'all. Yeah, it's like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's a rounders. Yeah, bat. Yeah, 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 have fun yeah. with it. Okay, <laughs> good. That's better than I thought. Happy bat. It's like a car. I'm making this shit up. I'm method. <laughs> Um, I thought it was going to be like an oversized pencil. So that's encouraging. Very good. Oh, God. <laughs> D- does this mean that if you get really into the combat later on, you're going to end up smashing your computer up? <laughs> we can only hope. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> you, you are there in this clearing outside this cabin in the woods. So I said there's moonlight giving you a bit of light out here. There's no light at all coming from the cabin. What are you doing? Alex wants to take a quick, just like look around the cabin, the exterior to see if it does, if it's more than just a passing resemblance Um, because they were expecting to come to a cabin, right? So they're wondering how much of it is just their, their mind tricking them into, well, you were expecting this, so here it is, um, versus what it actually looks like. Okay, so, yeah, from the outside, it looks exactly the same. Um, There are a number of windows, uh, which are all covered with wooden shutters. There's a wood pile around the back. Uh, There's an outhouse. And... That's pretty much it. All right. And they look back at the other two. Far as I can tell, it's exactly the same. 
Yes. And we know that ain't possible. You, you've been out there though, right? And this is this is exactly what it is. I've I've been out there a couple times, Paul. I took you out that one time, and you didn't want to you didn't want to go all the way, and I had to let you off at the gas station, if you remember. Uh, the sip and zip. I've, I've yes. You wanted to see Bobby for yeah. some reason. Thought he could calm you down. Uh, I had to and, eat one of those stupid donuts. <laughs> And I've I've been out to the cabin a couple times, Paul. This is I've been around the whole thing, and it looks like this. And Paul, how is this possible? I don't know how it's possible. I'm not I'm not any kind of scientist. I I, I ain't no extraterrestrial person. I don't know anything about sci-fi. What is going on? Bobby. Time to find out, and Alex is just going to march towards the front door, but they're going to knock but not kick the door down. <laughs> and Bobby's okay. gonna, some people do. Bobby's going to yell from outside the cabin because he's not that eager to go inside. Just yell, Eric! Eric! Just, just hollering toward the cabin. Okay, no answer. So Alex goes up to the front door, and they knock. And there is no reply from inside. You're telling us there's people in here. And he just nods. And Alex well, is going back answering? again while they're talking in the back. Alex is just like, Pat, Pat, are you in there? No answer. Is that door open? Hell, let her go in first. <laughs> Alex tries the the hand, jiggles the handle, not quite yeah. opening it, but checking to see if it's if it's locked. It's not locked. Y'all, it's unlocked. We going in? Well, hell yeah, we're going in. She says she says our kin in there. I'm going. Yeah, right after right and after Paul, y'all. Paul rushes by. Paul rushes by Alex and kind of shoulders the door open. Okay, yeah, you shoulder the door open and go inside. It is perfectly dark in there, but you you had some light sources. Inside, it's mainly a single room. Um, There are doors to a couple of bedrooms, but most of the cabin is a single room. And looking around inside, it's sparsely decorated. There is... A fairly large wooden table with some fairly simple rustic wooden chairs. There is an old wood burning stove over against the back wall. There are a couple of cabinets next to that, wooden cabinets. There are some hunting trophies, uh, or at least um, you know, animal skulls, uh, you know, deer skulls with antlers mounted up on the walls and the I mean, the only other feature apart from you know, the, like I say there are the doors to two back rooms and under the uh, the table there is the outline of what is probably a trap door does it look like does it look the same inside as as it, the other one did it looks exactly the same the furnishings are the same everything is the same is there any is there any like stains or evidence that that a murder happened in there or is it pristine and clean? You look around for a little bit, flashing the light around. And yeah, you can't see any blood stains, scuff marks, gouges, anything like that. Are there any lanterns in there that we could illuminate to no. All right then. I know y'all don't like me. Are you in on this, Paul? I thought no, we were I'm not friends. in on this. We are friends. Are you kidding me? She showed me a picture of my brother. Why? Why do you think we're out here? I don't. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. I always felt Alex like looks. Me. Alex looks back at Annie. Like, ma'am, could you come in here, please? I. I don't want to. Ma'am, please. 
I mean, she's got her arms crossed across her chest and mm. her head down, and uh, reluctantly she shuffles into the doorway. Um, where in here did you see them? You said you, you took a picture, but I can't quite tell on, on the phone where you took that, the, that picture, ma'am. Uh, she points out a section of the wall between a couple of the windows. There's no one Paul here. Gets his fl- oh, Paul gets his flashlight out and illuminates that wall for Alex. Sorry, Can you compare like the photo? No sign of anything. It, it, it looks the same. But, yeah. ma'am, there, there's no one here, and my friend here has been walking all around this place, and we, we don't see any sign that anyone, anyone's been here in a while. And as you say that, you hear the sound of something crashing to the ground outside. I'm drawing my gun. <laughs> this okay. is too much. This is too much. I am startled. <laughs> I am pulling out my forty-four. Safety off. Okay. Hey, my bat's at the ready. <laughs> Seeing Alex do that, Bobby's going to get his tire, tire iron out, but he's going to get behind Alex. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure all of your characters do this. <laughs> I like to die second. <laughs> I'm ready to go. So, Screw it. <laughs> so, are there windows by the door, Scott? There are windows, yeah. There are uh, three windows in this room. In fact, sorry, four windows. There's two on the long wall. Mm-hmm. There's one on each one of the shorter walls. The windows are, however, shuttered. There are you know, stout wooden shutters mm-hmm. bolted in place over them. That's not ominous at all. Um, no. So I'm going to like kind of lean up back against the wall next to the door and try to peek out around the edge and see if I can see anything or anyone. It, it sounded like the noise came from the back of the shack. Mm-hmm. Paul? You want to go see what was back there? Yeah, I think I do. Uh, Be my guest. Paul, <laughs> Paul goes out to the back of the shack and starts <laughs> poking around. Are the, you said there's two back doors, right? That no, might go only, into a basement. Oh, yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, there are two doors that go into other rooms in the shack. Yeah. And and is that the the general direction of where no. the noise came from? No. no. So just to, just to sort of give you the layout, if you think of you know the, the bottom where I'm drawing here or mm-hmm. indicating here, that's where the porch is, the front door. Then there's a main room. There's the um, wood burning stove at the back. There's the chair in the middle, and then there's the two doors down this side here, down my left, your right. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. All right, so Paul's going to go check out where the noise came from. So, I mean, you think it came from outside? Well, it certainly sounded like it came from outside around the bank. So, okay. Is <laughs> and, and Alex was going with Paul, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, cover. Yeah, cover me. Mm-hmm. What, what yes. <laughs> I ain't staying in here by myself. He's going to follow them, but at a, a little bit of a distance behind Alex. Okay, you're, you're, you're a little bit behind. As you're just leaving the shack, oh, from inside, you just hear quietly, you came. And it sounds like Eric's voice. Eric? And Sanity. I'm going to turn Sanity around to roll. see where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll get back to you in just a moment. Oh, perfect. Meanwhile, we'll deal with the other two <laughs> as, <laughs> as they head round the back of the shack. Mm-hmm. You go around there and you see pretty quickly what made the noise, which is the wood pile seems to have collapsed. There's uh, little, you know, small logs of wood just scattered all over the place. You see anything there, Paul? Just a bunch of wood. Nothing, nothing too scary back here. I just wonder what knocked it all over. And as yeah. you say that, you hear the sound of movement deeper in the woods. Do you okay. hear that? The sound of 
ju yeah, just the sound of a, 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 tr a twig breaking and the rustling of undergrowth. It was right. probably a fox or something, maybe hiding in a wood. Jeremy, pile. weed raccoons. Jeremy's that you? Maybe raccoons. <laughs> oh, specifically the weed raccoons. <laughs> can we? Can I? Can I? Can I roll a spot hidden and look in the woods? You certainly can. I'll do the same thing because I'm I'm out there. Um. All right, I passed. And I did not. Okay, so Alex doesn't notice anything, but Paul, as he's shining the beam deeper in the woods, just sees behind a tree for a moment. There's someone's hand on the tree, and then it just disappears behind the tree. Alex? Did you see that hand? See what hand, Paul? There was a hand on a tree, and then it moved as soon as I shined the light on it. I think you've been watching too many horror movies, Paul. I told you not to do that. You know you get nightmares. Well, okay, but I haven't been watching a lot of horror movies. I've been watching a lot of YouTube to distract myself, and there was a damn hand on that tree. Now, Paul... We called out. Nobody responded. Don't you Which, go psychologist on me. Don't do this bullshit. <laughs> you're the one who's usually asking me for free sessions, Paul. So you're getting Okay, one. well, this ain't a session. We're in the woods by somebody that brought us to see our dead relatives. Now, what are you explaining now? All I'm saying is you called out. We both called out. Nobody answered. So if you did see a hand and someone's running away in the woods... Don't you think that means they're probably up to something nefarious? You didn't yes, hear any sound of them running away. And you would have. They're close enough mm. that you would have. But if he saw a hand and it's someone leaving, like if there's someone out there and they're not responding, they're probably up to something nefarious. Or they're hiding and watching. She brought us out here. Yes, but if it was our, our folks, don't you think they'd respond if they were expecting us? Well, you'd hope, but they are also dead. I know. There's no there's no reason for them to be hiding, whether they're ghosts, which I don't believe in, but it, whether alive or dead, they should be responding if, the, if they're ours. That, that's all I'm saying, Paul. I don't want you and, going running off in the woods after some phantasmal fingers that you saw out there. And as you say that, that, you hear, you hear <laughs> the beep, 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 beep of the car alarm going off. Uh, well, I think we should go back in. See what well, Bobby did to himself at this point. Let's cut back to Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bobby had <laughs> just heard Eric's voice from inside the cabin. Y you came. I, I wasn't sure you were going to come. You came. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get me out! Get get me out of here, Bobby! Get me out of here! Oh God, I'm so frightened! Get me out of here! Get me out of here, Bobby! And what does Bobby see? He doesn't see anything. It's coming from a dark corner of the room. Okay, I'm I'm coming! I'm coming, Eric! And running right toward that voice. And you run over there, and you hear his voice from behind you somewhere saying, "Oh God, look! J just get me out of here!" It, it, it won't let me go. It won't let me go. You, you, you need, you need to give it something, Bobby. You need to give it something before it's going to let me go. Uh, I'm trying to help you, Eric. Where, where the hell are yeah, you? Help me! Help me! Help me! What? Look, it's, it, it says, it says that, you know, that that if we give it someone else, then 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 I can go. We can. That it, it'll let me go if we give it someone else. With someone else? How? What? You got... it, 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 it likes it when you use the sickle. A sickle. What? Eric, what the? <laughs> <laughs> Eric, Eric, what, what the hell? Where are? You? If I could just see you, I just want to see your face. If I could just see you, we could talk about it. 
And I think, yeah, as, as the two of you come back towards the front of the cabin, there's the the lights flashing on the car and the car alarm going off. And you can, you know, just in between the beeps, you can hear that Bobby's talking to someone inside the cabin. I mean, there's no sign of Annie, so could be her. Mm. Bobby, who are you talking to? Do, do I hear that? Is she inside? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, a, yeah, 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 you, yeah, you hear Alex in the doorway there. They're there. It's Eric. I thought I, thought I heard him. I, th- I don't know if I'm going crazy or... I heard him. I heard as, his voice, his, his real voice. As you turn around to talk to Alex, you see something on the floor that you didn't notice there before, just by the table. Lying on the floor, there is an old rusty sickle lying there on the ground with a wooden handle and a rusty iron blade on it. All right. Bobby's going to very quickly pick that up and and look at Alex and be like, uh, protection, I got... This will this this will do better than the tire iron. I got... I found this. This is good. Where the hell did you get a Grim Reaper sickle? Well, I think... <laughs> you know, no, no offense, Bobby, but th- those things take a lot of muscle to, to wield... Well, no, I mean, this, no, it's this one is of those little sickles. It's, it's a one, it's a, it's a one-handed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's one-handed. a child it's sickle. A sickle. <laughs> I'm, I'm like Captain yeah, it's Hook, a sickle, right? Not a side. Yeah, it's a sickle, not a side. Yeah. So it's just a one-handed mm. implement. Oh, yeah. uh, never. Oh, I, mind. I, I, I'm I never know that. Comment then. All right. I, I know that. Okay. <laughs> that was a very intentional comment. <laughs> okay. Right. I I <laughs> did it. <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> I went to an agricultural school. What a <laughs> but uh, yeah, Bobby. Bobby grabs that and he he backs away uh, as he's explaining to Alex and if uh, if if Paul's there too, just saying I got I got another weapon just in case. Uh, I heard I heard Eric. I thought, but maybe maybe it was nothing. I, this place is creeping me out. That's all. You're having to shout a bit to make yourself heard because the car alarm is still going. Bop, 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 hollering. Outside. Paul, can't you hit a button and make it stop or something? I can, but I didn't hit it to go make it go off. You think somebody's stealing something? It might have warded them off. And, then, whoop, whoop. and I'm like, as, <laughs> as I'm yelling, as Bobby's yelling, trying to explain his intention with the sickle, he's holding it up almost menacingly, uh, <laughs> explaining to him, I-, I found this. I think it'll be a better weapon for us in case we run into trouble. Bobby, you're going to want to put that, you know, just down just a little bit. OK, I'm getting a little wary of what you're doing here. OK, Batman. Well, you got a bat and she's got a gun. Can I have a good weapon, too? You can have whatever you want. I don't care. Just don't hold it up like you're going to hit it. Now he's, now he's waving, he's waving going it. On. <laughs> Paul, go check on your car. And, I don't, you coming with me? You draw yes, that I'll, gun and I'll, cover me. Yes, I'll come with you. Just shut off the fucking car. I did three times. You heard me do it. Go out to the fucking car. All right, so Paul goes out to the fucking car. <laughs> and, uh, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be like six feet back from the car, and I'm gonna do a lap <laughs> around the car. Okay, um, so you know, I, 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 as, as you as you get you know to, to the car, and you can see a couple of things. First of all, one of the windows is smashed, and also. Yeah, as you flash the light around, it looks like all the tires have been slashed. Y'all, my car's fucked up. Well, we knew that when we rode all the way up here. (laughs) No, I mean, it's fucked up more than usual. You don't have to keep giving me shit about my late model vehicle. All right? As as you're completing your circuit, as you're completing your circuit from round the back... As as you get round the back of the car, and Alex is you know, providing cover with the gun from the other side, you hear a soft voice from behind you saying, "Oh, Paul, God, thank God you're here. You got to get me out of here. You got to get me out of here, Paul." Jeremy. 
It's, it seems to be coming from the undergrowth behind you. Jer- Jeremy, is that you? Got, you got to get me out of here. <laughs> Paul, Hearing Paul, his brother's uh, voice, he runs. Okay. Runs to where it's coming from. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So Alex sees, uh, yeah, he sees, sees uh, Paul run into the woods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and yeah, you know, it's it's dark. It's woodlands. You know, he, you catch sight of him for a little bit because of the light, and then you know he disappears around a tree, and you've lost him completely. I'm not following. I have seen enough horror movies because Pat and I used to really enjoy watching horror movies. When Speak- the tires are slashed and people are running off into the dark, you don't go running off into the woods in the dark. Speaking of Pat, you hear her voice coming from the car. Yay! <laughs> so, Alex, Alex, is that you? Alex, I c- can't see anything, Alex. I can't see anything. Where am I? Pat? Pat? Is that I can't you? see anything, Alex. I can't see anything. I'm going to very cautiously approach the car. Pat? Where are you? <laughs> Help help me, Alex. Help me. It won't let me go, Alex. It won't let me go. It won't let, it won't let me go until until it gets someone else. Until it has someone else. What, 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 what do you mean, Pat? Who, who's got it's, you? It's, 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 the, it's the cabin, Alex. It's the cabin. It won't let me go. I can't get out of the cabin. But... but you're out here. I hear you. I'm not really. I'm not really. I'm still in there. I, I, I'm, it's taking everything I can just to just to speak to you, please. Oh God, get me out of here. Just do, do, do whatever it wants. How do I know what it wants? It wants you to use the sickle, Alex. It wants you to use the sickle. I swing around and stare back at Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's cut very quickly to Paul as Paul's running off in the woods. Mm-hmm. Scott, and is that a yeah, good yeah. time to take a break and then come well, back and pick it up with Paul? Well, no, no? no let, let, but let's just wrap up this little bit. Okay, with perfect. Paul then, yeah. yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt. That just oh, good, I was about that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's been fun, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so Paul's running off into the woods, and uh-huh. yeah, you, you, you don't get that far before once again you just see just for a moment you think you see the shape of jeremy disappearing around a tree and you realize yeah that that, that hand you saw disappearing around the tree earlier that must have been his but then you hear his voice from behind you saying paul you 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 got to do what it wants it, it it, it only it only wants one thing. It, it it says it'll let me go if if you give it someone. If you give it someone, what's it? What do you mean it? The, the, the cabin. The cabin. It, it, it'll let me go. It, it'll let me go if you give it someone. What do you mean, give it someone? It. it you have to. You have to give it someone. It, it, it wants blood. It wants it, it wants you to use the sickle. That what use the sickle? Like you want you want me to kill someone for you? That ain't and you. Th- and I think that's a good point to leave it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Perfect. I'm so we so <laughs> fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm happy to have the sickle or not happy about that. Um, <laughs> But oh, uh, shit. yeah, so we have just a just a ten minute break and intermission, and uh, we have a little trailer okay. for Unland, the the podcast that that starts on uh, or the arc that starts on September twenty second on Tuesday, uh, followed by kind of the retelling of Y'all of Cthulhu, our main arc through public domain videos. So enjoy that or take a break. But we'll be back in ten uh, either way. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. It's a lot of do fun. Do watch so Unland. <laughs> After 27 years, Funland Management announced that the popular amusement park will close its gates for good, effective immediately. Mr. Fun's big.
big twister has made its last run around the Funland Amusement Park. Following a year marked by scandal. Our
So we're switching back over away from the intermission and uh, I believe everybody can see and hear us again now. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed the intermission if you stuck around, uh, especially the Unland trailer. We're really excited about that. That is Scott keeping his own scenario from uh, a Stygian Fox collection of Call of Cthulhu. Uh, really short scenarios, right, Scott? Uh, yeah. Fear yeah, sharp 3, little needles. Each. Yeah, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. We played with Joe and Owen from How We Roll, and it was me and Wes from Ain't Slayed Nobody. Um, it was it was great. Everybody was great except for me, which that's fine because I'll edit it and I'll feel like I accomplished something. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you get to hear you get to hear me fuck up a British accent. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but, but oh. since we're, that's more uh, scary than anything in this scenario so far <laughs> no he did well with it but it's not like my scottish okay. but once we uh <laughs> since we're kind of right after the intermission uh can y'all all just kind of tell people how they can follow you on social media because i don't think we really did that uh too strongly at the front end scott sure uh sure yes well if people want to follow me on social media i'm on t- Twitter at S. Dorwood. Um, I don't really use Facebook very much. Um, there is a good friends of Jackson Elias uh, subreddit, so you can find us on there. Um, and there's links to all this stuff um, on blasphemoustomes.com. Our main social media presence, however, is probably our Discord server, which is pretty lively. Um, that's linked to from the from blasphemoustomes.com or alternatively just search for good friends Discord. Very good. And how about you, Rena? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at snarky underscore uh, Romulan. I'm on there quite a bit promoting all the stuff that I do. And there is a lot coming up that I can't talk about yet. So keep an eye out there. Um, you can also find me on the Ain't Slayed Nobody Discord, uh, the How We Roll Discord, and the Good Friends of Jackson Elias Discord, because I am everywhere. Um, and you can find me there as Romulan Rena. Perfect. And Wes? You can find me on Twitter at Thaktor, and that's pretty much how you find me, is just Google that that name. Um, I'm also generally at the street corner of Northwest Highway in Abrams in Dallas, Texas, holding up signs and ranting and raving, so if you want to find me there. <laughs> um, and I think I've got some, some stand-up stuff on YouTube if you want to go look for that, but I haven't posted a lot of that, but uh, that's it. All right, sweet. And I'm Cuppy Cup on Twitter. Uh, but for gaming stuff, you probably want to follow Ain't Slade. We're Ain't Slade everywhere on every platform. Uh, Ain't Slade Nobody dot com and our Discord, which R- Rena, you reminded me to uh, to promote, and Scott just <laughs> talked about theirs. So if you go to Slade dot me slash Discord, that will take you to our invite link. And Slade dot me slash any platform, Twitter, Reddit, whatever, it'll take you to to us. Uh, so do do check us out when you can. And I'll turn it back. Yeah, and to if you, you want to talk for... to me on there, just tag me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, we're ready for violence now. I think. Always. Very oh, good. Shit. You've come to the right place then. <laughs> <laughs> so as we left it, um, Alex was talking to Pat, uh, who was apparently in a car, this car with the slashed tires and smashed window. Um, Paul had run off into the woods and was speaking to Jeremy out there and they left uh, poor Bobby, I guess, back in the cabin. Is that right? Did you go out with the others? Did you stay back in there? No, I kind of imagine that Bobby uh, with the sickle in his possession is now like either on the floor or up against the wall, wherever that voice was coming from trying to like find Eric. Like I, I have, mm. I have the sickle where, where are you? What do I need to do? I, I need more information. Yeah. I... No, I mean, you take a look around. There is no sign of him in the cabin. Like I said, I mean, it's mainly just the one room. There are the two doors. And if you take a look in there, both of those are bedrooms, but they're very basic bedrooms. They've got wood framed beds in there, but they don't have mattresses or any linens on them. Uh, there's bedside tables, uh, but nothing on the tables. And One's got a chest of drawers, one's got a wardrobe. Again, wooden, and again, nothing in them. I was so uh, scared to go in there, so thank you for letting me know. Trap do- <laughs> 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 there is the trapdoor, 
uh, under the table in the main room. And there are the shuttered windows, and that's pretty much it. And it, it didn't sound like the voice was coming from the trap door. Is that correct? No, it, it came from a few different places, from right. the corner of this room, and then from one of the bedrooms, and then from behind you in the main room. I think Bobby's so confused and maybe a little bit paranoid now that he's he's not going to do anything like crazy suspicious, but he's at least going to go into one of those empty bedrooms so that he can kind of watch around the door frame to when Alex and, and Paul come back in, if they do come back in. Um, he doesn't just want to be standing <laughs> yeah. out in the open. Well, actually, that's a good point. One thing I haven't done yet, because apparently I'm not thinking straight this evening, is I haven't asked any of you to make sand rolls for this yet, which was yes. a more good. Good I was so wondering. Let's, let's do that. Mm. Let's just do a D100 oh, for the actual let's. sanity loss. <laughs> I rolled aggressively. Ooh, I passed. <laughs> Ooh. That's not on. Barely. And how about the other two of you? I failed mine. I failed as well. Oh, good. This is what we like. Yes. So for Bobby, I think it's, you know, from the way you were reacting, it's appropriate that Bobby failed. Bobby has lost five points of sand, I think, from this, because this is just clearly impossible. Let's have an intelligence roll off you. (laughs) Rena's so eager for me to pass this. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Yes. I definitely did pass it. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, you... Well, I mean, the, the good news is you get five points of Cthulhu Mythos. Okay. So, put that on your character sheet. Thank you for the gift. Uh, yes. You are, however... <laughs> you are, however, having a bout of madness. And... Mm, I think at this stage... Actually, yeah, because you're alone in the shack. I mean, it sounds like you are trying to find Bobby. So this, I'm guessing by the time the others come back, assuming they do, but by the time they do, you have pretty much ransacked this. I mean, there's going to be furniture overturned. You know, it's perhaps smashed in some cases. You know, the, the cabinet's open, everything, you know, just... Yeah, just overturned and uh, no, no Eric, however. Okay, good. Yeah, maybe like ripping through and any anything soft with the sickle as well, just going wild. There isn't anything soft in here. There's okay. just the wood. All right, just the wood. Very good. Carve my name in the wall. Now, are you actually doing that? Oh, God, is that going to kill me immediately? <laughs> No, no, not yet, not yet. Do it, do it. It wouldn't make sense. It It wouldn't make sense. What are you doing? Do that. Uh, No, I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write Eric on the wall when I come back. Okay. (laughs) Um, and Alex failed as well. Is that right? Uh, Yes. So can you um lose? Let's see. Come on, Damn it. Only two two points of sound. Come on! (laughs) Why can I never go crazy in a game with you? (laughs) Give it time. (laughs) Oh, God, that was ominous. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, you... You clearly aren't holding it together that well. You You can still hear Pat's voice coming from the car. But there's no sign of her apart from that. (sighs) This can't be real. This is some kind of hallucination brought on by trauma. I had a very rough week, and then all of this with the pictures and being brought her phone, I'm hallucinating. That's it. Mm. Auditory hallucinations. That, that, yeah. That's a thing. I, I know that's a thing. It's just auditory hallucinations. That's all. That's called psychosis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can. Uh, okay. It's not real. Pat's dead. It's not real. Pat's dead. And would this be a good point for Paul to come out of the woods? 
as, <laughs> as Alex is standing there talking to themselves, saying Pat's <laughs> dead is not real over and over again. Paul, Paul is slowly walking towards the house. His eyes are as big as saucers. And he's just kind of got this, this dead shock look on his face as he walks up to everybody and says, the, the house wants blood. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't lose sanity. <laughs> That's just Paul no, being matter he, of fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, uh, I, I, I mean, Paul didn't lose <laughs> Sam, but it sounds like Wes did. <laughs> you told me the house wants blood. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> Paul's very honest. <laughs> it's Paul. We're, we're having some kind of group hallucination. Maybe there was something, some kind of psychotropic hallucinogen in the air in the cabin. Or maybe that girl did something, released something in the car. I, it's some kind of sick prank. That's all it is. A house is not an animate object. It can't want blood. Listen, Alex, you're making some wild ass logical leaps here. Now, listen to me. We just saw pictures of our dead relatives have been brought to a cabin. I want you to look around. My car's fucked up. He's got a sickle and the house wants blood. And my brother just told me to use the sickle. So why don't you tell me about that? What what kind so, of group ass hallucination bullshit's going on here? I didn't where, say there where, weren't where other we people here now, Paul. Someone could have slashed the tires. So the, the Annie, whatever her name was, could have brought us up here as some kind of sick prank. Right. You, uh, Paul, Paul. Where has, the hell has a house, is Annie? Has a house ever asked you for blood before, yeah. Paul? I mean, that's a good point. Where is Annie? Uh, I assume she's in the house. <laughs> she's not outside. <laughs> Somebody's knocking on my wall, so I had to look. This is really freaking me out. <laughs> Method again. <laughs> So where are Alex and Paul having this conversation? Have you gone back in the shack or are you talking or outside? Or by the car. Right. Yeah. Because I'm trying to calm him down before we go back in the house. Cause right. What, what did you want... hear? Hmm? Alex, what did you hear? You walked over towards the car. You were covering hmm. me. What did you hear? Well, this is why I think it's some kind of group hallucination, Paul, because I heard Pat. Paul, look at me. <laughs> don't don't you go getting distracted. Now, I'm sorry. No. Somebody's oh. banging on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> now, I th this is why I think it's some kind of group hallucination, Paul, because I heard Pat, but she was saying the same thing you were saying that that your brother told you, which so is, our, our hallucinations are communicating with each other. Is that what you're telling me? No, but if we're all experiencing the same kind of trauma with the same kind of drug at the same time, we could all be hallucinating the same thing because it's. It's the atmosphere. Now, I ain't take no drug. Did you take a drug? Paul, we had a discussion about aerosols, remember? Okay, yeah, but that's just kind of outlandish because she just stood there staring at the damn window the whole car ride. How's she going to leak a hallucinogen? Plus, we it, was driving. What about the house, Paul? We were all in the house. We didn't start saying things till we were in the house. That's all I'm saying. Okay, but... <laughs> Just hear me out here. The house is the same fucking house, but it's not in the same fucking place, okay? Well, now that is a conundrum. Isn't it? it <laughs> but to, <laughs> it could be that someone set this this up in, on the inside to, to look like the place where, where our families were, were killed just so that we'd have this reaction. Maybe there's Listen, some this kind is of not fucking QAnon, all right? Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's some around. kind of psychology experiment going on here. Some of those kids from UNC, I bet, are at it again. Going to have to have a talk with their dean. I told them they need to stop these kind of dangerous experiments. Uh, but it, it's <laughs> like, it's, it's, there's a rational explanation for all of this. Don't be jumping straight to the house wants blood, Paul, because that's how we all get killed, Paul. 
I didn't jump to the house wanting blood. My brother, who has been dead for six months, told me plainly that the house wants blood. Okay? Yes, I don't know. Well, I'm not going to okay. give it blood. I'm not a killer. Uh, okay. That was my next question. As long as we're on the same page about not giving the house blood. I don't want to give the house blood, but if it keeps asking, we're going to have to do something about that. Well, now, Paul, if it comes to that, we're both agreed on, on who the blood has to be, right? Well, yeah, we're clearly killing Bobby. <laughs> but... Uh, can, can, um, let, me just, let me just let me just interject. <laughs> let, let me just interject to say that while you're having this conversation, you can hear coming from inside the house what sounds like you know furniture getting moved around, smashed, thrown, you know, t- tossed over. There is banging and thumping and so on coming from inside the cabin. Okay. Can Bobby also uh, while he's, shit? while he's doing that be talking to Eric? Like oh yeah. Do, do I need to kill somebody? What, do, what the hell do you mean? Who? Oh, shit. Eric, if you just talk to me. That. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if it's loud enough for you to hear all the words. <laughs> we hear I kill somebody. Kill is enough, yeah. <laughs> so, Paul, we are in agreement. If the house ends up needing blood, we give it Bobby's. Yes? Okay, but I was told to use the sickle. I ain't got a sickle. I got this fucking thing. Okay, we're going to have to get the sickle from the guy who may be the twin brother of the person that killed everybody. But Or could be the same person. We don't know. So, I mean, they are identical twins after all. Okay, so you're getting on me for logic and you're saying that (laughs) twins are the same person when one of them's dead. (laughs) I'm so scared for Bobby right now. Let me just say... I'm gonna beat. I'm gonna beat Bobby's head in. It did not take long for them to talk themselves into this. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Reservoir Dogs on Bobby. Uh, now, Paul, we we only said if. For now, we're going with the whole we are not giving the house blood thing. We're just making sure that we're on the same page here. That if push comes to shove, beating comes to beating. You go after Bobby with that bat, not me. Listen, I'm not the one with the sidearm, okay? <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll shoot him if I have to. I'm, I'm just making sure we know we're on the same page. Listen, we can go down the violence rabbit hole if you want to. So you'd rather <laughs> me beat him to death in front of you than pull your gun and do it real I, quick and clean, I, give the house what it wants and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I, I said I'd shoot him if I had to, but I'm still not convinced that the house wants blood just because some voice in my head told me it wants blood. Is the voice in your head, though? Probably. Possibly? Is it? <laughs> yes, yes, it, it, it's, in, it's in my head. It is Definitely. right above your head. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely in my head. So, now, Paul... We got to try to keep our grip here. We don't want to go making Murder Shack redo, Electric Boogaloo. We don't want any of that sort of nonsense Ah. going on. Ah. Okay? Okay. Okay? Okay. So. Okay, I'm going to find my center. Deep breaths like we talked about. There we go. There we go. Focus. Okay. 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 I feel better. There we go. Now. We're going to go in there and see what the hell is going on with Bobby. And then we'll figure out what we need to do from there. Okay. Okay. So we walk, are we walking in the house? We're headed back towards the house and I still have my gun out. Hey, so you go into the shack and... Yeah, inside it, you know, the the huge table somehow has been overturned. Some of the chairs are just kindling. Uh, um, there's even one of the um, w- one of the antlers from the deer head just lying on the ground. Um, the and and yeah, standing in the midst of it all, there is Bobby standing there holding the sickle with a wide look, a wild look in his eyes. Uh, I'm muttering something about blood and killing. Hey, now, Bobby. 
Bobby. Put the sickle down, Bobby. Bobby, I'll lower the bat if you put the sickle down. <laughs> what the hell is it? I knew this was a setup. I knew I knew y'all was trying to kill me from that first meeting. We're trying There's to kill you. Look at what you just did in here. I'm gonna put this down, Bobby. Eric. Eric. Help me, Eric. Help me do it. I can't do it, Eric. Help you do what, Eric? Bobby. Help me find Eric. Just help me find Eric, Paul. No, you asked Eric to help you do something and you're holding a sickle, so tell me what it is. Well, hell, y'all got a gut and a bat. Why can't I have a sickle? You can have a sickle. You just- I'm sorry, Alex. You just tore up the whole cabin, Bobby. That doesn't exactly inspire confidence. I'm looking for our kin. What the hell do you think we're doing out here? She... And you thought they were Bo- hiding up on the antlers somewhere? <laughs> well, she said they were in Alex, here. And hang they're... on. Let me ask Bobby a question. Bobby, what does the house want? <laughs> as as you say that, there is the very distinctive sound of a door closing. And as you look round, yeah, the front door, which you left open behind you, is now closed. How far are they from Bobby right now? I don't know how far. How close did you get to the madman with the sickle? Oh, I think I would have stopped just inside the door to keep some distance. Right. And just okay. because of the what the fuckness of all the furniture mm-hmm. and everything being destroyed. Same. Are they looking back to the door when it closes? Because I'm already facing that direction. Yeah, you just saw the door slowly close. Okay. If Paul turns around after he asks, what does the house want? I'm going to go at him with the sickle and take a little swing. <laughs> of course. And I'll shoot. Because I've got <laughs> oh, my gun yeah. out. <laughs> Fucking hell, that didn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to oh, lean God, into the bout of madness. All right. Uh, yeah, oh, you, you, you're, you're not actually undergoing the bat madness anymore. You oh, okay, come out of it just so, to make that clear. This is I, my I'm own not bat saying madness. that you shouldn't. I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have this right ball. I'm just saying that you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> well, once once Paul asks that question, I think it alerts Bobby to the fact that he's not going crazy. That the house does need blood, um, and maybe that's what <laughs> takes him out of the bat of madness. Um, since yeah, he doesn't, I probably shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> no. <laughs> So I think that that was alarming. So just when they turn to look at the door, I'm thinking it's this is even if it kills me. I didn't. I didn't turn. Oh, you didn't look at it. I'm trained in. I'm trained in things. You're the active threat in the room. So I'm keeping my eyes on the active threat in the room. Okay. Hmm. See, I thought you both turned, so that complicates Mm it. Mm -mm. But uh, no, sir. I I committed to it, so I'll I'll take my move toward Paul. Okay, so I'm not trying to see. kill him necessarily, but maybe like <laughs> you're just you're just trying to give him a nice little cut on the on the neck with a sickle. I think like yeah. abdomen. Hang on. A little- I lost all that audio because my headphones died. So why don't you back up and tell me exactly what you just did? <laughs> <laughs> That's something to come back to. <laughs> Last charge. This is bullshit. All right, well, what? Yeah. So 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 we were just say you need to roll up a new character, Wes. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> You're Annie now. No, I uh My name is Blaine and I'm here to destroy. Alright. <laughs> Robo Paul. So I think for the, justice. After after you asked what the house wants, I was gonna try to when the door closes, I was gonna try to run toward you and take a swipe of, at your abdomen with the sickle, but Alex uh was maybe shooting me. So, <laughs> yes, if I see you moving towards us in a threatening manner, I'm going to pull the trigger. It's just Paul, though. Good job on those CHL classes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, well, I mean, it certainly sounds like Bobby is running towards <laughs> Paul. Um, on the other hand, Alex does have a gun ready, to, um, mm-hmm. which gives them plus 50 on dex rank. So <laughs> you do get a chance to shoot first. Are you are, are, are you shooting Bobby? Are you firing a warning shot? What are you doing? Um, 
Well, I'm going to try and hit him in the shoulder. I don't want to like blow his brains out or anything, but I do want to hey. stop him. He's got a he's got a weapon. He destroyed the house. He's obviously going crazy in here. Yeah, it's it's kind of difficult to shoot someone in a non-lethal way, but it is. you can try. <laughs> uh, that's a success. Okay, what kind of gun is it you have? The forty-four Magnum. Oh God! Yes, you do. You're fucking joking. <laughs> I told you about this in advance, Scott. Oh God! Yes. Are you going to shoot him in the God. femur? Shoot him in the femur. <laughs> shoot. <laughs> I'll be doing I sound effects. I mentioned this in advance. I told you what kind of gun I was bringing to this party, yes. and you didn't you say You know anything. exactly what to do. Listen to your inner Jeremiah. Put it in his leg. <laughs> Fever this time. <laughs> okay. Well, then, then uh, yeah, roll a d10 plus two. Um, oh, God. Is it d10 plus two? Because my manual said 2d6 plus three. Oh, sorry. I was thinking of a 45. Yeah. yeah. Two I only have 10 hit points, y'all. <laughs> Not for long. Uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's 14. <laughs> well. <laughs> Is he fucking dead? Remember, remember when the guy fell off his horse and I told you I only wanted to shoot him in the leg? <laughs> you remember that? Payback. Motherfucker? <laughs> Is there any... How's it taste, motherfucker? <laughs> the door really screwed me over here. Is there any way to, like, fall forward so I can at least get the sickle in the paw as I die? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I've exploded. Um... <laughs> oh my god uh, does this mean she gets so, her sister back her wife well i mean let, let's let's resolve a couple of things first of all so yes that 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 sort of shoulder shot you were aiming for i mean your neck is fairly close to the shoulder <laughs> I mean, it's, it's attached to the shoulder um yeah and, and so yes you you have just shot bobby through the neck just uh, you know blowing a big chunk of meat out the back as he stumbles forward and ground in this huge <laughs> spreading pool of blood uh, um sanity roll yeah i think so because you have just mm. murdered someone paul wasn't looking was he he was turned around oh <laughs> i think you've got to look back in a moment i don't think you're just going to stand you're gonna there hear with the your gun going off eyes for the right i'm gonna yeah, whip it's... around uh. Let's yeah. see what happens. With the you, you, on the other hand, you don't have to make the sand roll for this because you didn't mm -hmm. kill him. Uh, I passed my sand roll. Okay, well, that was you fine. didn't like Bobby that much anyway. Yeah, I hated Bobby. Okay, this but I turn around and see dead Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Bobby <laughs> is very dead there on the ground. <laughs> Sorry, You God. said to <laughs> not fine. give the house blood. <laughs> well, look, if you look... Paul, where he is, he was coming at you with the sickle. He was going to give your blood to the house, so I shot him first. Paul slowly reaches down and grabs the sickle. Okay. Now we're now we're dual wielding. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll block in a strike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, so, Cup, uh, let's just have a little sidebar while I um, try to while, while I sort something out here. Okay. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I I think I'll DM you on Discord. Okay, and... that's fine. Do I need to put the the chat on standby? Yeah, I think that might be a good idea. All right, we'll be yeah, back. I, I, we'll I, be back I, in a I moment. I wasn't anticipating a character <laughs> death quite this soon. <laughs> For some reason, I got it in my head that I wouldn't get shot doing that, but that, that wasn't accurate. Um, so <laughs> so I'm going to put everybody on Twitch on standby for like just a couple minutes while we sort something out. Yeah. All right. Oh, fantastic. Uh,
I think I think we're back now. Uh, sorry about that, <laughs> yeah. guys. I I died too fast. <laughs> but, but it's very me amazing um, but sorry for amazing uh, sorry for messing things up there scott <laughs> no, oh no no it was glorious <laughs> uh, i will not apologize <laughs> no that would be a normal thing to do i think in north carolina so <laughs> I would shoot people in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> Decapitate them with your forty-four. Yep. All right. Oh so God. yeah, <sighs> as, as we left it then. So Bobby is lying there dead on the floor. There's not much of his neck left. There is a lot of blood. Um Alex's and Paul's ears are ringing. Mm-hmm. And also From somewhere in the shadows of the room, you didn't notice it before. Um, But, yeah, and Annie's in here with you. You don't know how you missed her last time, but, yeah, she's there in the room. Uh, Alex staggers back a little bit from the recoil um, and is also just like, staring wild-eyed at the corpse of Bobby on the floor, because even though they didn't really like Bobby, they weren't actually intending to kill him. Kill him. So they're just, like, backing up against the door. Like their, their hands are shaking with the gun still in them, just like... <sighs> Paul? Did, I, did you see that? <laughs> I saw it! Do you have what you want now, House? Do you have it? You got some blood, look! There's no answer. Well! And then Paul notices Annie. And what is it? What is Annie doing? Yeah, cut. Yeah. What is Annie doing? Now Hello. that you're playing Annie. <laughs> uh, Annie, Annie's just standing there, uh, kind of looking down at the dead body blankly. Of body of Bobby, and then looking, looking back up at you specifically, Paul, almost like with surprise that that happened. Why did you bring us here? They, they asked me to. Who is they? They, they, you saw them. They, they wanted me to bring you here. They. I saw pictures. I ain't seen them. It's it's so very confusing. Pat's voice. Alex hears Pat's voice from somewhere behind her, just in the darkness of the corner, saying, "You're supposed to use the sickle." Sh- should I do that now? Should you do what now? You heard that. You heard a woman's voice saying you're oh. supposed to use the sickle. I also <laughs> heard that. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I told you it said to use the sickle. Well, I couldn't shoot it with the sickle. Now, could I? Well, we have one now, and I hold it up and show it to her. Okay, well, like, hit him with it. <laughs> See if that does anything. All right. Okay, <laughs> I will. So Paul walks up to... <laughs> Bob's body <laughs> gives a little kick nudge to make sure he's already dead. <laughs> is he dead? Yeah, he, he's, he's pretty dead. His brain is yeah. gone. So, that's, yeah, that, that, that whole missing neck thing is a bit of a giveaway. Okay, it's fair. I'm not a biologist. Um, so, <laughs> Paul takes the sickle uh, and just brings the point in down just like straight into his gut. Just whack. Do I need to roll for that? Yeah, I, well, I think you need to roll sanity because <laughs> <laughs> I know he's dead, but you're still hacking up someone you of used course. to know with the sickle. <laughs> now I got that damn Gautier song in my head. Now All you're right. just a Bobby that I used to. <laughs> I, I way failed the sand roll. Like, I, that's a spectacular. I rolled an 86 there. So, Ooh. oof. Against a 40. Well, th- yeah, oh. well, I think appropriately you lose five points of sand for this as you're getting a. down, hacking Fucking up a. the body. All right. 
There we are. I'm down to 37 if everybody's keeping track. Uh, am I in a bout of madness? Sand, how, much, how much sand have you lost in total? Uh, I started at 45, so I've lost, uh, I've lost a good solid eight. Okay, so you're not indefinitely insane yet. So give me an intelligence roll just to see whether you're having a bout of madness. All righty then. Uh, 35, so I did okay. Yeah, I, uh, that's actually a hard success. That's a bad okay. thing, Wes. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I have a catch. To Depends on your perspective. <laughs> I keep forgetting yeah. that with sand rolls, and I've been playing this damn game for long enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you are having a bout of madness, and I think the way this evidence is at the moment is that... Yeah, you are just, I mean, the house, you know, or you were told it wanted you to use the sickle. So that's what you're doing. You're using the sickle. I mean, you are gouging away at this body. You are hacking gobbets of meat off it. There, you know, things are going crack. Things are going crunch. As Alex is watching, you know, they can just... Well, um, no, because he already okay. made the sand roll for, um, <laughs> for for killing him in the first place. Are you happy but, now, Bobby? <laughs> but yeah, you just see Paul just... I mean, he is reducing this body to mincemeat and offal and bone fragments and scraps oh. of, of bloody cloth. Oh. The house wants blood! I'm giving it blood with the sickle! Am I meeting all the criteria for satisfying the house's goddamn desires? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to back away. Like, Are you going to back up now? <laughs> yes, because you're getting blood all over me, Paul. Well, that's what the house wants, isn't it, Alex? <laughs> I'm going to pass way, out in a second. Hang on. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, can you give me a luck roll as well while you're doing all this? Me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's roll for luck. Yeah, that looks uh, 41. So uh, that's a fail by one. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. So as you're hacking into the body, a few times the sickle goes through this wet pile of meat that, that used to be Bobby and it cracks into the wood of the floor and when that does so I mean the the wood cracks and crunches a bit and there's I mean you can see under the blood that there's some kind of black goo bubbling up through the broken bits of, of um, Bobby of course there is uh, but one of the times you bring the sickle down, you catch your hand on this uh, this bit of wood that is broken off, and this large splinter of wood just sticks into the side of your hand. And when you bring your hand up, you can just see that there is this you know, sharp bit of wood that, that is just stuck. I mean, it is under the skin of your palm. And it hurts like hell. Okay, okay, just point of order real quick. Is any of that black bile goo in that splinter and in me now? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, certainly good. coated in it, yes. Dope. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't think that's it. <laughs> And as you're watching, the splinter wriggles like a worm and just burrows into your skin and disappears into the flesh. Oh, God! You see that? Uh, that wood just crawled inside me. Have you tried cutting your arm off? Might stop it. Oh wait, what happened? We're all just hallucinating. Was that just a thing? What I just killed a man. Drug I thing? just killed a man, Paul. I don't think we're hallucinating anymore. Okay, well I just hacked that man up into bits and had a piece of floor crawl inside my arm, and I ain't cut my arm off. I didn't come this far to lose an appendage. Well, you might lose more than that. That's all I'm saying. I don't give a shit anymore, to be honest. I guess if I don't um, give a shit, I should cut my arm off. But. <laughs> oh. 
I think Annie might say to Alex, he's gone mad. He's mad. We're all mad here. <laughs> You're scaring Annie. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we, let's flip it on her. <laughs> Look, I got a cell phone. It's got cartoon drawings of your family. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so wait, am I gonna? I, I think I'm gonna start taking her consider her her suggest Alex. Sorry, their suggestion of 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 me hacking my arm off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe. T- I'm still in about a madness, right? Um, I, by the time you've reduced the body to meat and bone fragments, no, you've 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 come out of it. Sorry, I seem to have lost it there. I think yeah, I thought I saw something did. crawling my arm. You kind kind of were getting a bit scary there, Paul. Okay, but the half asked for blood with the sickle and. What are we going to yeah. do but give it to it? Yeah, yeah. We're in agreement on that one now, I think. Uh, uh, Annie? Uh, Annie? Yes? What the hell is going on? I thought you might tell me, Paul. And she looks Don't down call. at the what's left of Bobby. <laughs> on the floor and then looks up at Alex. Alex is looking around going, Pat, Pat, are you there, Pat? There's no answer for the moment. Jeremy, I gave it blood. And again, there's no answer. Paul, you want to try the door, see if we can get out of here? Paul walks over to the door and jiggles the handle. Yeah, the handle doesn't even move. I think the only way we're going to get out of here is break that window. So uh, Paul walks over to the window. Yeah, so so just to, <laughs> ju- just to explain about the windows. Oh, they were shattered. Of- yeah, that, that, yeah. There's there's wooden shutters bolted open them. There's no glass in the windows. They're just basically holes in the wood with wooden shutters bolted open them. We can't see out at all. Oh no, no, no. There's just solid wooden shutters. How thick is this solid wood? Are we talking like particle board, or are we talking like two by fours? Um, it's difficult to tell from where you are. It's just wood. So, should we break break those open something? I think it's worth a shot. Now, I don't think I should be shooting that. We just saw what happened when I try shooting things. <clears throat> I'm going to take a cut at it with this bat, see what, see what happens. I am a weak <laughs> freaking character, by the way. <laughs> um, okay. But so what you're what you're going up to the shutter and you're starting to smash at it with the wooden club. Yeah, I want to give it a couple of whacks. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's put this down to a strength roll then. Okay, that's better. All right. Ooh. Okay. Okay. That's a uh, that is a success. With a 29 against a 50. Well, so what happens is, yeah, you've managed to put some real muscle into this. And as you smash into the wood, again, as you did when you were cutting in with the sickle, but now even more so, you are smashing into the wood and it's fracturing, it's chipping. There is more and more of this black ooze coming out. And you've you've shattered (laughs) enough of it that you can see that there the wood it's it's almost like a veneer and underneath there is something else there is something 
black and pulpy that's pulsating under there and you're revealing more and more of it as you're smashing the wood and as you do this the entire house starts shaking it's like an earthquake you know, you, you, you know the, the rest of you you know, you're struggling to stay on your feet you're, you know the lights are just bouncing all over the place as you're holding them in your hands and you're picking out random beams and what you can see as well is as the beams of light are just moving across the wood as you're being shaken around you can see moving in the grain of the wood around you just the impression the fleeting impression of faces all these faces just you know maybe it's paradelia but you're you're just seeing all these faces just in the the grain of the wood shifting around looking out and the air is filled with the sound of screaming let's have sand rolls <sighs> hard fail hard fail <laughs> oh all right i passed <laughs> <laughs> why not <laughs> Uh-oh. 96. Ew. 96. What was your San uh, before you rolled that? 50. Well, my, before I rolled it was a 48, but my, I started at 50. Oh, okay. So, no, no. no but so uh, your San was 48, so that is actually a fumble. So you lose yes. the maximum possible San. Yes. That is eight points. <laughs> um, and. Fucking finally. <laughs> uh, Paul still loses one point, which. That takes you to nine points sand loss, didn't doesn't it? it total, and you started on forty five. How how many did I just lose? One. 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 Okay. You'd lost right. eight before then. Total is that right? Uh, yeah, I started at thirty five. I'm at thirty six. I've lost nine total. So yeah, that is a fifth of your your sand. I'm also so at a fifth good. of mine. Yeah. So you're both indefinitely insane. Good. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, the house is shaking. There is the sound of all these voices screaming, the the shapes moving around in the balls, the the black icor running down from the shattered shutter where um, Paul has been smashing away. What are you doing? Oh, stop! Oh, uh, sorry, I need an intelligence roll off um, uh, for Alex as well. Yay! I mean, I'm a very smart person. That's a success. Yay! Okay. <laughs> uh, so, this is the first time you've had a bout of madness, is it? Yes, because I kept so you get five, passing so you get five. So you get five points of Cthulhu Mythos as well. Ooh. Um, and oh yeah, Paul should have got that as well for his uh, um, for his bat of madness. You can split Bobby's. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, I, let's go for this then for your bat of madness. You. Mm, well, no, I think rather than just going into a killing rage, because that would be too easy at the moment, I, I, I think <laughs> you need to find some way of getting out of here at any costs. Yeah, it, it is just complete claustrophobia at this stage. You are trapped. You are going to die in here unless you get out. So what does this involve? Well, I, th I think because I know the door is closed. Might just try shooting at that area that that Paul's been pulling open. Maybe I can shoot through it and make a hole, and I can run out of here. It's a great idea. Let's die. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if I can make the hole big enough, if I can shatter it a bit, I can get out of here. I can get out of here. This is going to be uh -huh. the fastest way to get out of here because the door's shut. Okay. Um. Well, I mean, it's not really going to be too difficult for mm. you to shoot a section of wall <laughs> I, yeah it's it's slightly difficult because you are getting tossed around a bit while doing so um so i think yeah are, are you 
just shooting once? Are you emptying your entire gun into the wall? What are you doing? Um, well, I think if I'm trying to trying to get out, I would just empty the whole thing because I'd be trying to make as big of a hole as I possibly could. Okay, yeah. And how many bullets does this take? Um, I had it somewhere. Is it a revolver? Mm-hmm. So that should be... Uh, I think that's six, so I should have five left. So you've, so you've got five left. So, yeah, make, make five rolls and... It's really only going to matter if you fumble, because otherwise mm. you're just shooting. But if you fumble, fun things could happen. Cup, is it going to fuck up the feed if I roll 5d100 at the same time? No, give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> roll 20 doesn't know what to do with that. Nice. That looked kind of cool. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so I got a critical. I got a critical. Yeah, there's a one in oh, there. There's wow. a one. And no fumbles. <laughs> Okay, so um, I would get a critical crit on shooting a fucking crit success ball. Is gonna be, that's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, okay, I, I so, shoot so well, I accidentally hit Paul. <laughs> well, roll five lots of damage then. So that's oh uh, plus plus one lot of maximum damage. <laughs> okay, so it's normally two d six, so that should be ten d six plus fifteen. Uh, yes, I think I'm mapping yeah, correctly. Pl- plus, yeah, plus the full damage. Pl- plus, pl- plus another 15. Okay. Uh, uh, so 10d6 <laughs> plus 30. <laughs> That's a 61 plus 15. Um, okay. <laughs> That's 76. So, God. yeah, I mean, what <laughs> the rest of you can see is Alex just, you know, in the midst of all this chaos, unloading their gun entirely into this shutter. And it blows, it does blow a big chunk out of this. I, it's, I mean, it's, I, I say a big chunk. I mean, you, you can see you know darkness on the other side but there is you can see the moonlight you can see the outline of trees on the other side and just for a moment i mean there is this horrible meaty smell that is coming off the wound in the wall that you've created the house is still shaking violently around you but you have created a hole big enough I'm going to run for that hole. Possibly close out. I mean, you, you, you'd be crawling out, not I, I, jumping I out. I got to get out of here. This is the first thing I've seen might let me get out of here. I'm, I'm going to go for the hole, Scott. I mean, as, as you're going towards it, I mean, you can see, you know, just as you're doing so, almost immediately it is starting to close up. Get me the fuck out of here. I'm getting okay. out. Okay. Well, Let's do this then as a dex roll to see whether you can squirm your way out through okay. this slippery, your pulsating closing hole. Jesus Christ, she's going to get cut in half and I'm going to be alone in the house. <laughs> Please cut her at the neck. Oh, that's a hard success. Oh, hell yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Then, yeah, what Paul can see is Alex <laughs> just running for this hole and, and, you know, diving into it and just squirming through their, you know, they, they, they you know, almost pull their skinny jeans off in the process, but, you know, manage to wriggle through. And then there is, you know, just as there is this sort of slurping noise, <laughs> the hole closes up. I do want a luck roll off Alex, though. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. That's a success. Okay. Oh, actually, yeah, it's going to have to be a hard success because of what you're doing at the moment. Um, what is my... I don't think my luck is high enough for a 35. No, it is not. Okay. So, yeah, again, as you're crawling through this hole, you, yeah, you, you get a gouge in your arm from the wood, and again, a splinter goes in. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, almost exactly <laughs> as happened 
with Paul, by the time you're on the other side, by the time you get to the ground, you can just see the splinter disappearing under the skin and into your flesh. <sighs> okay. They can, they can deal with this at the hospital. I'm, yeah. I'm, I just got to get home. Just got to get home. Just got to get home. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, you are having a bout of madness at the station now that you're mm -hmm. on your own. I mean, we'll deal with this later, but you are now just wandering through the woods on your own I'm, in the I'm middle of the night. F following Batted the trail back as best I can. Well, yeah, you hope so, but <laughs> you are not in your right state of mind. You are covered in, in goo and filth. Yeah, you're torn up, your ears ringing. I murdered and, a man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So inside the shack is now just Paul and Annie. Oh God! Right. <laughs> Get to die twice. <laughs> Filthy motherfucker! I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> All right. You look too much like Bobby. <laughs> you hear, you hear Jeremy's voice from somewhere inside the house, saying. You were supposed to, you were supposed to use the sickle. You were supposed to use the sickle. I used the goddamn sickle. Look at the pile of meat on the floor. But he was, he was already dead. Sorry, we've got a guest star. We've got a spider that's just dropped down in front oh, of me. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it's a bummer. Add, you have to add, burn your house down. Add to the horror. <laughs> well, I like spiders. <laughs> um... You were supposed to use the sickle. Okay. Okay. There's, there's a, what do you mean? There's, there's only one thing. There's only one thing it will want now. There's only one thing that that will keep it happy. There's only one thing that that you know, it before it will let me go. There's only one thing you can do. What? And as as he says that, you actually see him. He steps forward from the shadows, and you can see it is actually Paul. He's there, just in the the, the light from your your phone, with that same blank look on his face as you saw in the photographs. And he points up. And as you look up, yeah, you can see hanging from the rafter this the news. So, okay, wait, that that got staticky. You're telling me there's just a noose, no body in it. Oh, I think, I think Scott's frozen. Scott. Oh no, shit! Just a noose. And oh, there sure. we go. And, Oh, oh shit! Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're good it's, now. It's just Jeremy standing there. Put, put, okay, it's just Jeremy standing there, pointing at this noose that you can see hanging from, um, uh, from the ceiling. What do you want me to do with that, Jeremy? He's just pointing at it. Jeremy, you need to use your words. <laughs> <laughs> you have a body now. Use it. Yeah. You have a part of that body is vocal cords. <laughs> um, it's, 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 the, it's the only thing that will satisfy it now. It's the, if, if you want me to, if you want me to go, if you want me to be able to get out of here. And he just points at the noose again. If I want you to be able to get out of here, I have to, I have to die. He just nods. Well, fuck that. See you later. Um, <laughs> um, Annie's trying to make herself small right now. <laughs> Just like, get in the corner. What's my persuasion? Uh, <laughs> Are you going to persuade her to, to die to save your brother? Apparently I'm not that good of a salesperson. Okay. Um... <laughs> 
Mm. I can't even intimidate her into doing it either. Well, you can't really <laughs> intimidate somebody into suicide. Let's see. I could appraise the news. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Too bad Bobby's not here to do an accounting on it. Uh, <laughs> can I go over to Jeremy and like touch him and see if he's real? Yeah, you do. You go over and he feels real. Okay, I have a thought. (laughs) (laughs) Is the sickle still in play? Yep. You still got it. Yeah. It's It's, it's like, it's in my hand. All right. I thought it got stuck in the ground. Well, no, no. I mean, you you finished hacking up the body after that. So, yeah, you you have the bloody sickle. All right, so I'm going to take a look over at uh, at my brother, and I'm going to take a look over at Annie. <laughs> I'm going to take a look at my brother again. I'm going to take a look at Annie. <laughs> and Annie's got to die, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving me this other character, and, Scott. <laughs> Annie, get pleasure. your gun. You're the one that you're the one that embodied the creepy woman who dropped in on a meeting and showed me <laughs> pictures of my dead brother. Um, That's true. Okay, so I'm gonna ask Annie a question. It's like, Annie. Yes. He said the house wants blood. He didn't say the house wants a body. If I use this sickle, can I cut you and let you drip blood on the floor? <laughs> Suppose you could, you could cut yourself. Oh, yeah, I could. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can but see, I've been to. through a lot today, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't reckon I'm ready to get any more wounds. I had a worm crawl up my arm, Annie. <laughs> Suppose it's a perhaps question you're not of- aware of the toll. This the, look. It's got to be me spilling someone else's blood if I'm doing the math correctly. Don't fact check me here. (laughs) So Paul takes the sickle and just runs it on Annie's, uh, like the back of Annie's hand. Well, what's what's Annie doing about this? Because I imagine Annie Annie. has a say in whether she's gouged with the sickle. Yeah, I think she's fine with it. She'd at a minimum (laughs) try to dodge because she she doesn't quite remember things, right? She's fuzzy, but she's not going to want to get uh, cut with a sickle either after watching what uh, this party's done to this point. So I think a dodge maybe? Try to get out of the way? Yeah, okay. So then I think it's going to be a fighting brawl roll from Paul. I mean, your goal initially was just to scratch the back of her hand, but as she's dodging out of the way and you're having to be a bit more aggressive in doing that, I mean, it might turn into a bit more inadvertently. Oh, God. Bye bye, Cup. <laughs> Hard fail. Um, oh, shit. Because my fight, my fight brawl is 25 and I just rolled a 78. So. Annie failed as well. A- okay. Oh, okay. But, yeah, I mean, you, you try, but, yeah, you were only prepared to scratch the back of her hand and she's snatched out of the way and just moved back. You know, you, you haven't quite managed to do that. Look, Annie, it's not so bad. And I take my hand and I run the sickle across the back of it and drip some blood on the floor. Okay. Are, yeah. Are you sure that that's what it hurts? was? That really fucking hurts. Mm-hmm. And you hear you hear um, Jeremy's voice saying, it isn't just the blood it wants. It needs someone. It needs someone to take my place. It needs you. You have to, you have to take my place, Paul, before it lets me go. You have to take my place. But you've been dead. Why do I have to take your place? That's not something my brother would ask me to do. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. I'm getting an idea of what it's like, and it doesn't look very good. (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay. So it has to be me, Jeremy? Can it be her? <laughs> Gestures it, at Annie. It has to be you. It doesn't want her. Why doesn't it want her? He goes quiet. And Jeremy, Annie, why does it have to be me? Because it wants you. Annie smiles and gestures to the noose. <laughs> Paul takes a cut at Annie's neck because fuck her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, then again, give me a fighting brawl roll. This, this is the let's murder cup party. Uh, okay. 19. Success. <laughs> is there any chance of dodging this? You can try to make a dodge roll, yeah. Nope. I missed by <laughs> one. She okay, does have luck, so but I don't know if it's... <laughs> As an NPC, originally, I don't think she should spend it. Okay. Then, uh, so that's <laughs> going to be a D6 bla- damage plus any damage bonus that Paul has. Okay, I don't think I have any damage bo- bonus here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to my sheet. My damage with an unarmed self. Well, this isn't unarmed, so this is so it's just the D6. Just the D6? Yeah, just the six. There you go. I got a three. We're losing Scott. Oh, Scott. Oh, Scott. Oh, no. <laughs> Are you consumed by the shack, Scott? <laughs> okay, yeah, I just... Annie. Sorry, if I not if I drop, oh, could, yeah. am, I, am I back now? We can you're hear back you now. now. Okay. Okay, good. So, white the killing blow that you were aiming for. She's dodged back slightly, and you've slashed across her chest. You've ripped the top of her blouse open. You've gone across just uh, yeah across her collarbone, and torn the skin open. And what's coming out? is not blood. You can see this black icor that, the same as you saw coming out from the floor, coming out from her chest. And where you've cut into it, instead of bones being exposed, you can see fragments, broken bits of wood sticking out. Okay, what a fresh fuck. Let's have a (laughs) sound. She is the shack. Does this mean I get to uh, fuck him up now? That's a, it's a failed <laughs> sand roll. Okay. Well, I mean, at the very least, at the very least, you are having another bout of madness. Um, and you're losing another five points of sand. Of course. God damn. All right. Uh, I mean, All right, I, so I, I, I think in this case, you know, that... You know, it's really got to translate to a killing frenzy, just destroying it. You know, everything around you, whether that's Annie, whether that's Jeremy. Yeah, things need to die now, is what <laughs> you're saying. Okay, so I've got two weapons, and I'm just hacking at everyone and everything. Um, meaning Annie. One person. <laughs> meaning Annie and Jeremy. I'm, I've lost my freaking shit. I'm so uh, glad I got out of there. <laughs> and pieces of Bobby, perhaps. Yeah, probably. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna kick parts of Bobby at Jeremy. I'm gonna like you know the whole nine yards. Just like I'm not gonna die in this fucking house, and if I am, you're coming with me, and just hacking at everything. Now, because there effectively aren't any other player characters here, with Annie right. being an NPC, let's use the summary version of the Bats and Badness. So, sometime later, you're not quite sure how long. You sort of come back to your senses and you're sitting there on the floor of the cabin and there's bits of body all around you. There's the bits of of uh, Bobby, you know, the fleshy bits. But then there's also the bits of Annie and there's the bits of Jeremy. And so I've killed there, them both. Yeah, there is just black pulp and goo and these fragments of wood that look a bit like bones in shape but aren't quite just scattered all over the floor some of them still twitching and yeah you're 
you, the light on your phone is just flickering. You, yeah, if you have enough sense to look, and you're on one percent battery life in there. And overhead, just the one thing you can see as the light is flickering away is just that noose hanging overhead. Uh, you are exhausted. I mean, not just exhausted from all the killing. Um, right. Yeah, you know, not just the muscle ache there, but just you know, bone weary, and it's like you know, the, the the life is just being sucked out of you. Full blown major depressive. Done. I, more, more, more than that, you you just feel physically weary and ill. And yes, mm-hmm. I guess also full blown major depressive episode. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what else is in the house? They are the remains of the furniture. You know, the few bits that didn't get smashed. There is that trap door on the floor. Uh, oh. There is the noose hanging from the rafters. We know what we didn't do. We didn't go check out that floor <laughs> trap door. Um, so before I build a... Uh, a uh, a fake deer out of the deer head and all of the human meat. I'm going to go. <laughs> I don't. I'm not going to kill myself until I fucking have to. So I want to go open that floor oh trap God. door that we didn't think about. Okay, you clear the bits of broken table and chairs out of the way and the bits of meat, mm-hmm. and you you. There isn't a handle on the trap door. There is a little knot hole that you can stick your finger through. I mean, as, as you you know, as you stick your finger inside and try to pry it up, I mean, the inside of it is warm and moist. Right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, in the flickering, fading light of your phone, you you lift it up, and there's a kind of. <laughs> noise and it lifts up good. slightly and you can see these strands of what looks like black rubber holding it in place as you lift it up slightly <laughs> okay yeah. um okay, i'm gonna shine my flickery cell phone down in it and you can see this flight of black steps disappearing into down into darkness. They just shine with some sort of goo that's all over them. What the hell? Let's go in. <laughs> well, you, you, you'll need to hack the strands that are holding this in place, but happily you do still have the sickle. Thank God I have the sickle. Let's cut those things open. Do I need to roll for that? No, no. But right. I mean, the, again, the, the the shack doesn't seem very happy about when you do it. I mean, as you hack away, again, it shakes, and and you know, you, you oh, can is just this upsetting you? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You could just see again the shapes of uh, the, you know, the the faces in the, uh, the the wood grain, just looking out at you in agony and horror as you're doing this, before the light on your phone just goes completely. Um, okay. And and as you do that, there's a, and the trap door just lurches up and slams back over the other side. Mm. From down below, there is this. Yeah, very warm, moist air coming up. There's a meaty smell to the whole thing coming from. So I've made it. You can hear. I'm so you've opened it. You've you've opened it wide open, but you you haven't gone down the stairs yet. Okay. You can you you can from down below. You can hear the sounds of dripping liquid. You can hear what sounds like people groaning and crying in pain, and just that that meaty smell. White guy in a horror movie. Let's go exploring. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm gonna take the steps down. I gotta know. Okay, yeah, I told going you down. To stop watching yeah. those horror movies, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Can I roll you to haunt him? Down... <laughs> <laughs> well, probably you may have your moment. <laughs> Which dead ass character are you gonna haunt me with? <laughs> you'll have your, you'll have your choice in a moment. <laughs> so, um, yeah, for, you, you go down the stairs. I mean, it, it's it's difficult because you are doing this completely blind. You have no light now, and the stairs are slippery. They are covered in slime, and 
Yeah, as you step on them, I mean, there is a slight give. These aren't wood. These aren't stone. You're not sure what they are. It's just but, meat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it feels meaty. It certainly feels warm to the touch. And as you go down, you eventually reach the bottom, and there in the gloom, and I say gloom because it's not pitch darkness now, you can hear the sounds of all these voices of people in pain and terror. And as your eyes adjust, I mean, there is some kind of phosphorescence, or some kind of natural light down here. It doesn't seem to have a single source. But you can just make out little bits and pieces. And let's have a sand roll before <laughs> we get into this. That'll go well. Oh, passed. Of course. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay. All right. So, yeah. so you owned, so you only lose um, three points of sand. <laughs> Is that which, it? because you're indefinitely insane, is still enough to trigger a bat of madness. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> he is so insane right now. Mm-hmm. So, I, you, your mind can't piece all this together. You see things. I, you, you, you can see. You can see this sort of gelatinous thing all around you. It's pulsating. It's it, it's dark in places and clear in places. And there's there there is light, but it, not enough to see clearly. And there are you can see people's faces, and there are arms reaching out. There are some arms, you know, hands, fingers touching you. Some of them rub across your face and grab at you. And as you pull away, fingers come away as you know they come off as you're pulling away. And there are other things that you, you can just get capsized. Things floating like like they're suspended. Just you know, things like. Um, there, there's there's items of clothing. There's um, there, there's a phone in there. There's you, you can see yeah. There's a sickle. There's a sickle in there, just hanging there, hanging in it. That's not air. No, that's that's something else. That's not air. And there are voices just crying in in pain and agony all around you. I, one of those voices is Bobby. One of those, you know, you can hear Bobby. Bobby, you you don't know where you are at the moment. You you can't move properly. I mean, you you've got an arm free and you can just about reach out, and you you know you can hear voices all around you. You can hear. Yeah, you can definitely hear and maybe see Eric, or maybe that's your reflection over there somewhere, but you can hear, you can definitely hear him crying, crying out, just, you know, wanting to be released from all this. You want to be released, you want to get out of it, but you can't, you just can't move properly. There's just your arm, you can reach out almost with your arm. (laughs) Okay. And, and yeah, you your fingers brush up against Eric's fingers. And for a moment, the two of them just seem to meld into each other and then pull apart wetly with strands between them. Siamese twins. Okay. You said there's a sickle floating, right? <laughs> yeah. There's also the sickle that you've still got in your hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I have a bat and a sickle. I'm going to drop oh. the bat. And I'm going to grab the sickle. <laughs> Whoa, now grab I can... it. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're reaching into this wall of pulsating, warm, jelly-like substance, pulling it out. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. There's a <laughs> noise as you pull oh, it God. out. And this the, it, the, the sickle feels kind of wet in your hand. I mean, it's, it, it doesn't... The blade is drooping slightly, and as you move it around, it it wobbles alarmingly. Well, this is not what I intended. (laughs) 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 Droopy sickles, there's medication for that. (laughs) Yeah, 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 it's a side effect. Um, (laughs) Okay. There's arms reaching out from the wall, and as I pull away oh, yeah. from them, fingers are coming off of the hands and falling yep. down, is what you're saying? Yeah. Um, so my hacking at these arms isn't going to do much. I, it certainly hacks them off. 
but they do seem to be regrowing and and pushing out of the wall again. This is the worst Viagra commercial ever. Right? (laughs) Talk to your partner about Moist Hallway. Um, Okay, so... All right. So walking down, I'm walking down the hall. Is the there a okay. have fingers? Right. It shouldn't. <laughs> it shouldn't. <sighs> Side effects include droopy sickle. Um, so. Okay. So as I look down, like all the way down the hallway, I'm seeing the twins merge and pull apart as if they are silly. Oh, yeah. I mean, them amongst loads of, I mean, like hundreds of other people here embedded in these walls. Some of them are completely embedded, embedded deep within. Yeah. I mean, not even able to reach out. You can just about make out the form of Jeremy just there helplessly suspended in all this. Can I go? Okay. That's fun. Um, I'm going to walk over towards Jeremy and I'm going to try and pull him out of the wall. Okay. Then, yeah, I mean, it's you can take great handfuls of this goo and start pulling them out and, and digging him out if you want. Or, I mean, you could use the sickle, that would make things even easier. Yeah, I'm gonna hack the, I'm gonna hack the damn goo apart and, and try and get him out. Yeah, you do. You, you hack, you hack away at the goo, you hack, excavate deeper and deeper into this and. Uh, and yeah, you, know, you get to Jeremy's body and keep digging, and and you're, you're trying to, in your madness, get him out of this. And as you come back to your your senses, or at least what what passes for your senses, you're, you're sitting there on the ground, your back up against this pulsating wall, all these voices just screaming in terror and agony around you, and you're holding the sobbing form of of Jeremy in your arms. Or at least some of, or at least, yeah, or at least you're holding some of him. I mean, you've managed to pull some of him loose from the ball. I mean, you've got the torso, maybe half of his head, uh, the stump of one of his arms, and he's just quivering in your arms and crying. Jeremy, what happened to you? There, there isn't enough of his his face and jaw left to answer you. He's just his tongue. So he is can't. Just, he can't even give me like a like. A, yeah, that, that's all he can do. His tongue is just flapping okay. around loosely in the in the remains of his face. So my options are stay in the goose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I don't know, talk this out. My options are stay in the goo room with the corpses. Um, and the floaty shit and the black pile <laughs> and the merging twins go back upstairs, jump through the noose gloriously, hang myself, become a part of the goo room <laughs> or uh, again, like go back up there and try to get into another room of the house. Is that like a, can I get out of here or am I just fucked? Yeah, fucked. I mean, you've, been, you, you've been in all the other rooms. Fucked. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paul's seen enough. Paul, <laughs> Paul, Paul is going back upstairs and is going to, you know, open the trap door, get up there, gleefully, might I add, slide his head through the noose, <laughs> tighten it, and jump off. Paul's done. <laughs> That's enough. Paul is so done. <laughs> Paul is going to okay. nope his way out of life and jump straight into hell. <laughs> and and that is pretty much what happens because yeah, I mean your 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 pain from the hanging is mercifully brief compared to what is to come because sometime later, you're not quite sure how long, you wake up again and you're back down there in the darkness. But this time yeah, you're there just embedded in the wall. You can see the remains of Jeremy just still there on the ground. You can, you know, with the one arm you've got poking out from the wall, you can almost reach out to his sobbing remains, but they can't quite reach. I mean, just further down, you can make out the form of, of Eric, or maybe it's Bobby, it's one of the two. I mean, you, you couldn't even tell them apart before, but now forget it. And, and just all the other voices. 
and you're, you're there and you know know that you're there you're there as a memory of once what you once were you're there to be used uh, I mean one of the other figures you can see in there is the figure of Annie the, the woman who came to the support group she's there embedded in the wall as well and you, you just know that you know someday that maybe maybe this thing will send you out into the world like it sent her out just as a tool as a lure to try to drink drag people inside to bring them in so there was no trade <laughs> no no oh, no okay <laughs> annie gives paul the finger down there <laughs> Paul swims through the wall towards Annie's corpse. <laughs> <laughs> they live happily ever after. <laughs> but let's cut back to Alex. All yes. Right. <laughs> so Alex has spent the night just walking through the woods. I mean, by the time you make it out onto a road, it's it's daylight and you've you're pr- you, you've probably got hypothermia at this stage. You're you're just struggling to stay conscious. Um, and you, you just collapse on the side of the road. And you know, luckily, you know, this this woman in an SUV, SUV is driving past and stops. And you know, calls calls for an ambulance for you. <laughs> Shack, the blood, dead, every everywhere. <laughs> and yeah, you wake up sometime later in in hospital, and. There are obviously questions because, you know, you were found covered in blood and scratched up and, you know, the, uh, the police want to take a, a statement from you. I mean, what, what do you tell them about what's happened? Mm-hmm. Well, how much do they remember with the madness and then the, the hypothermia? Like, how much do they remember? I mean, you remember, well... I mean, you remember everything, but at the same time, it feels very dreamlike, dreamlike and fragmented and hallucinatory. So, I mean, okay. how much of that you choose to believe is up to you. We we were we were in in the cabin in the woods, and uh, I don't know why we were there. Maybe we were just trying to get away for a bit, and someone killed Bobby. They killed Bobby, and his brains were just everywhere. And 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 I ran. I didn't. Oh God! I left Paul. Oh God! Oh God! I left Paul in there. And yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's good. And and that's about all I get out. Okay. Well, I think then, I mean, based on what you've said and the details you've given, I, I really want to. I, I'd like you, I think, to make a luck roll to see whether oh God. you end up being, um, you know, uh, uh, facing police investigation for what's happened. Yes, <laughs> that's a ninety-two. Okay. So I think then what happens is, you know, the uh, the police send someone to go off an investigation. They eventually find, you know, this cabin in the woods with the hacked up remains of um, uh, of Bobby's body inside. Yeah, you know, they they never do find Paul. But, you know, they, they definitely find the brutally murdered <laughs> remains. Uh, oh, actually, no, sorry. They do find Paul. They find Paul hanging from the ceiling, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, there is some suspicion hanging over you because, you know, you got away. Mm-hmm. I the, you, um Yeah, I think, you know, at the very least... 
I mean, you may not be charged with murder, but, you know, there is an ongoing investigation that you've been told mm -hmm. not to leave town. And they're still trying to piece together from forensic evidence, you know, what mm -hmm. happened there. There's lots of interviews with you to try to work out what's happening. All the time that this is happening, there's also this maddening itch in your arm. I and you feel, you know, where you got that splinter. That, I mean, yeah, it, it's the, the, the wound has largely healed over, but you can just feel it itching the whole time. You should cut your arm off. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're past that bit. And then... <sighs> When you're in the police station in Asheville, being interrogated again, being asked more questions again, uh, you know, they, they they keep asking the same questions over and over again. You're, you know, at this stage they've they've taken things seriously enough that you know, they've actually no no they haven't handcuffed you to the desk, but they have locked you know, and they interrogation room so locked you in there and you feel this itching again in your arm and as you look up you can see that the mirrored glass of the interrogation room there's a dark mark on it there's a mark that wasn't there before, a blemish, a stain of some kind. And as you get up and look at it, you can see that it's a, it's wood. There's a bit of wood on there. It looks like dark pine, and it's growing. It's spreading. And, uh, and as you watch, you can just see around you just more and more of these flecks on the walls, on the door, just spreading out as the walls of the interrogation room start turning to pine, to, to planks, to wood. Not again, not again. Start banging on the door. Get me out of here. Let me out of here. It's coming. And and as you go over and you start banging on the door, the metal door that was there before is now just this wooden door. It's the front door of the cabin and you're banging on it and you, can, you, you can't even hear the echoes of the sound behind it anymore. And, you know, as, as, you, as you look behind, you can, behind you, you can see the wood burning stove there and you can see the antlers up there and, and, and the, 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 the table over standing atop the trap door and, you know, and, yeah, they, as, as the windows and as the lights seal over the wood, everything goes dark. And this time, you're not getting out of there. <laughs> and shall we leave it there? Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Bobby yeah. had the best result. <laughs> yeah, you just got shot in the neck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Painless. I, I love happy endings. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I really so like nice. the interrogation room change. That was cool. Yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was, yeah, you, Alex did not get away because of that splinter. If you hadn't got the splinter, the, the murder shack wouldn't have got its hooks in you, but mm. you were marked from that point onwards, <laughs> and you were, ever, you were always going to be its after that. Mm. And then I, missed that <laughs> I missed a hard by like two points. I got a regular <laughs> one, but I missed the hard one. <laughs> Rena ah. would have been a three for three, though. That would have been a shame. A pity. <laughs> so, yeah, I had my reputation to salvage there. <laughs> All right. That on purpose, making it a hard after I said I succeeded. Awesome. <laughs> thank you, Scott. I've been so excited to play this ever since I first saw it on your Discord channel mentioned. Um, so thank you for running it for us. Not only that, but running it live on a live mm -hmm. stream. Uh, very cool. Oh, well, my uh, pleasure. Uh, if you if you don't mind, take one more chance to just kind of tell people how to follow your stuff, how to get this scenario. 
Yes, of course. Well, yeah, um, if anyone wants to find out more about the work I do, best thing to do is look at blasphemoustomes.com. That's the home of the Good Friends of Jackson Lies podcast, which I do with my good friends, Paul Fricker and Matt Sanderson. And there's links on there to all the various work that we do, our social media presences and stuff like that. This scenario was published in issue 5.5 of the Blasphemous Tome. This is the fanzine that we produce for the Patreon and backers of the Good Friends of Jackson Lies podcast. Um, we do a print edition once a year, and as of last year, we started doing an interim PDF edition in the summer months uh, as a bonus. And this, this scenario is published in one of the PDF editions, the one from this year, which is issue 5.5, uh, which is this one. Uh, you can see the murder shack on the cover there, along with one of okay. its victims. Well, you're kind of blocked and by my overlay, but yeah, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, if you are a Patreon backer, you can go in and download that PDF, uh, as well as the PDF of issue 4.5, uh, which has got a scenario, modern, another modern day scenario by Paul Fricker called Countdown, with a lot of um, cult weirdness in it. All right. Perfect. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well done, Scott. And Rena, remind us again mm -hmm. all the things yeah. you're doing. <laughs> you can find me, excuse me, on Twitter at uh, snarky underscore Romulan. Um, and you can also find me on the upcoming Mr. Corbett arc of Ain't Slayed Nobody. It's great fun. I've got an upcoming uh, story with the First Watch D&D podcast. Check them out on Twitter as well. Um, and my uh, friend Mike Diamond from the Old Ways podcast released his scenario Time of the Serpent today, and I yes. have provided voice acting for some of the voice handouts uh, for that scenario. So check that out. Um, it's pretty awesome. And nice. you can you can also find me again on Discord. I'm on Ain't Slayed Nobody, Good Friends of Jackson Elias, and the How We Roll server lurking 24-7 pretty much. So feel free to, to reach out. Happy to hear from everyone. All right, sweet. A lot of good things going on. And Wes, I'm I'm on eight slate. <laughs> oh can, yeah, and you can find me <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter at Thactor and check out Unland when it comes out on the 22nd because it was a hell of a lot of fun. And um, other than that, like you'll you'll find me reading mostly. <laughs> okay, yeah, that sounds good. And uh, yeah, we are we are ain't slayed nobody. Um, I'm the keeper for that podcast, and we're playing Y'all of Cthulhu as our main arc, which is a down darker trails kind of homebrew that I've been putting together with Will Bazer uh, for our players, and, and Wes plays Jeremiah on there. Uh, so check that out. You can search for us anywhere, ain't slayed nobody, or we're ain't slayed on all social media platforms. I am Cuppy Cup on Twitter, and. Unland hits the 22nd. Uh, Mr. Corbett, which Rena mentioned, is with Mike Mason as the keeper. And that will hit either at the end of October or beginning of November, depending on how, how many parts Unland ends up getting sliced into. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we have a lot going on. So just follow us here. Tell people uh, about us. Follow us. Uh, check out our Discord. That's the most fun place to connect with us. Slade.me slash Discord will get you to the invite uh, that you can accept and then start chatting with us. Um, Rena and I are there a lot. Uh, and Wes will drop in <laughs> if you tag him too. And Scott uh, definitely pops in too, especially when someone oh, yes. uh, ominously calls his name. <laughs> uh, so Three times in a mirror. <laughs> but thank you to everybody who hung in for the whole stream. I know these are, uh, um, they last a long time, so it can be hard to watch the whole thing. Uh, but we appreciate y'all. And, and we'll have this available on demand, I think immediately on Twitch. So feel mm -hmm. free to share that out with everybody you know. And I'll post it on YouTube probably tomorrow so that um, you can watch it whenever you'd like. Cause I don't trust Twitch to keep it up there forever. Uh, but I, I don't know how it works. This is only our third stream. <laughs> so, but we'll, we'll be doing more stuff. Uh, I think we're going to do shadows over Providence with John hook. Um, I think oh, nice. o October 10th, I believe, but yeah, follow us on social and we'll, we'll, we'll get dates and everything um, for that. And that's it. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Rena. Thank you, Wes. Mm -hmm. All of you were awesome. I'm sorry that I died like an hour in. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> Fuck you. Scott's like, Scott was like getting into this, this tension build up, and, uh, and then I, I died immediately. <laughs> Just dead. <laughs> no, normally when I run this, I have to spend ages pitting the player characters against each other and ratcheting getting up and, and g giving them general nudge, gentle nudges to turn on one another. No, you, you three... <laughs> walking there in this 
I'll kill him. I'll kill him. No, no, I'll shoot him. Okay, right. <laughs> we already didn't like each other. We know each other. <laughs> I'll shoot Cup in the dick. I don't care. <laughs> Let's go. It would be it would be false advertising for our podcast if we were patient and and used logic yeah. to work through things. And if we all right. liked each other. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> oh, I like y'all. I just want Cup to die. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's your chance. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. look for Jeremiah's death on the next episode of our regular arc, second Tuesday of every that's fine. month. He needs to. Die. It's about time. <laughs> right. He's done enough stupid shit. <laughs> awesome. But thank you, everybody. And uh, Scott, I'm sure I'll try to get you into doing another one of these. No matter what, okay. whether it's live streamed or not, we're going to record the Green Pumpkin next Wednesday, oh, yes. which is oh, our yeah. Halloween special. Fun. We might not yeah, stream it, is, but but we'll see. Um, yeah, considering the whole thing's got to be improvised, right? I, I don't know whether it's a good one to stream. Yeah, it yeah. may turn out to be absolute dog shit. Oh, it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes I'll work with you guys on yes and and all that good stuff. <laughs> if we tell people it's going to be dog shit, we'll get more viewers. I think they they want to see the crash and burn. <laughs> <laughs> all right perfect all right i'm gonna i'm gonna end the stream now but again just Thanks, thank everyone. you to everybody all right take care